have you got any children? I said, well, none that I know of. You know, he said, when you do, you can tell them you taught Brian May how to play guitar. Hey, Bingo. we're good. Yay! <laughs> he's there, he's alive. How are you, Ken? <laughs> My baddie is back. Stop I've with been looking at jokes. <laughs> no more English jokes. No more English jokes. No, it's from Coventry. Joel's from Coventry, so, you know, we got to be careful there. <laughs> Cambridge, but I came when I was a little... Well, there's no but. Yeah, from Cambridge originally. So, yeah, Cambridge, yeah. yeah Cambridge. It was, it was, what's the Coventry link? Was that your father with the cars? My father, so... Um, Jaguars. Jaguars and whatnot. Yeah, yeah so my father, Coventry. he used to say he was Sterling Moss's pit boss. I don't know. It was, yeah. Well, that's, I don't know, it was why not? But I do remember as a little guy, uh, Fangio and Sterling Moss. I don't know if you're into Formula One. Yeah, yeah. It's boring or not. But uh, so they came here that Laguna Sega, we have a racetrack here called Laguna Sega. And I remember it was the year of Mercedes. So they bring out all these 1920s, I mean, beautiful cars. And they had them both there. And I, I, a little guy crawled through their legs and I gave him my cap to sign my cap. And I remember Sterling saw my father and he was like, oh, John. And we went back and we had dinner with him and Fangio. But I remember how Fangio, he couldn't, wow. speak, he couldn't speak any English. So he just wow, kept smiling man. at me and be like, good boy. You know, good boy. Wow. I'm like five years old. <laughs> so Fangio, it was a different way wow. to grow up. He's the race. Fangio's like infamous. When you uh, mix him, wow, wow. It's neat as an adult because it's a different kind of story. I don't know. You, so I, I still have my cap with my, my signatures, but it reminds oh, cool. me more of my father than those two guys, really. I, yeah, mean, yeah. Just, yeah. I remember he was so proud of me because I got down on my knees and crawled through all the legs. You know, what guy's got to <laughs> the table? You? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I cruised through yeah. and I got there and then we had dinner with him. And uh, he was very Thanks. nice, Sterling. He was very, very, very nice. He was, he was, it was cool. good to see him. And I don't know what nice. the he's from Birmingham as well. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, from this area where I am, yeah, yeah, so mm. much, all green, <laughs> mad brummies. <laughs> I still have a bunch of my dad's trophies from uh from England, from uh oh, I should know the tracks, but they give you like plates, so I have these silver yeah, right, plates yeah. And, uh, yeah. and a few trophies, and oh, I don't cool. know, it's a bit of fun. It's definitely a different time, but back when he raced, when you look at the pictures, he had a pet monkey. And he would go racing with the monkey. Yeah, it was like wow. And then, then and I have I have some of his suits still from racing cars. I don't know why. They're wow. great looking. I don't know how safe they really are. You did oh. used to say we raced without a helmet, but that's not true. They did. They did. no, but they had haystacks all around the side of the racetrack. And what what you know, you're driving around with loads of fuel in your car. What do you really want on the side of the racetrack when you're racing? Let's put haystacks there. <laughs> They'll really catch fire. They'll block the people. <laughs> Yeah, well, you blow the whole damn neighborhood up. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's do some intros so these guys know who you are. How's my lighting all right and everything? You all right there? Is it looking good now we got it on? Oh, you're looking good, buddy. Yeah, you're, you're looking good. Looking you're good. a little bright, but I think it's all right. I think I'll be all right. I can, I can deal with that. Okay. All right. My hair, is. am I still going bald? Yeah, wow. you're still going gray and bald. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing good. <laughs> I, was, I, was at a, I was at a pub the other day. Different pub, by the way, Ken, different pub. And the guy asked, because you're wearing the mask, and he said, do you... Uh, he said, do you have your ID on you? And I took my hat off and he just, he laughed at me. He's like, you can go in. Well, carry okay, on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, carry on. Yeah, yeah, carry on, carry on. So, all right, here we go. Uh, hi, my name is Joel Miller. And today we are listening to my podcast, Party Like a Rock Star. We're brought to you by Misha's Kind Foods. They're an LA based small business making the world's finest non-dairy cheese spreads on the market today. They're delicious and healthy made from a cashew and almond milk and blended with various locally sourced fresh herbs, vegetables, and spices. No vegetable oils, soy, fillers, starches, or nutritional yeast. Today's first guest is Kevin Batty Walsh. He's worked for Weapon of Peace, Ruby Turner, Earth, Wind & Fire, Jeff Lynn, George Harrison, Metallica, Slayer, Tesla, Celtic Frost, Black Sabbath, Alice Cooper. He toured for 13 years with Iron Maiden. He's worked with T-Pal, Bad Company, yeah. Soundgarden, Motorhead, Zuccaru, Men at Work. And in 2003, he stopped. <laughs> this is kind of mean. 
<laughs> in 2003, he stopped touring to do some teetotaling shit for a company called All Alliance. <laughs> That's right. <really. laughs> Ken Barr toured for 20 years with Kiss, Alice Cooper, Stone Temple Pilots, The Bengals, Rainbow, Debbie Gibson, and Air Supply. In 2014, he released a short film called Hollow Ground. He's written multiple books, including We Are the Road Crew. And that one is obviously about his music career. Yeah. He ran for three years, Road Crew Radio, and I'm sure many of us roadies listen to it often. So it's good to have both of you guys here. My first question is to you, Batty, and I would ask you, when you, uh, when you do prefer to dance, do you dance to T-Pow or Motorhead? <laughs> <laughs> Motorhead. Motorhead. Motorhead, it's easier. Yeah. Much easier. It's yeah, not, not fighting, so mind you. It's it's not fighting. It's supposed to be dancing. The <laughs> power's a bit more like this, you know. Carol was a bit, you know. This the motor head's a bit more like that. Yeah. But dancing, oh no, don't you know? It's nearly as good, well, nearly as bad as me singing. And Kenny could probably attest to that as well. You know, we're not oh, very good, good dancers. Lord. <laughs> Although I have seen you dance quite a bit. Yeah, oh, no, it, yeah. It on is a, the table. It is something to behold. A yeah, table dancer and part-time table dancer. <laughs> did either of you ever tour with Davy Kirkwood? Did you do Air Supply with him by chance? Dave Kirkwood, I know Dave Kirkwood was uh, he he did Zucchero with me. Oh Scottish, yeah, Scottish Dave. Scott, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, a, a wonderful guy. Uh, he's no longer with us. God rest yeah. his soul. Um, I did Zucchero with him, and we I was in LA for a bit, and Davy lived out there. What a great guy. And yeah, he lived he lived by my mom. So my mom's a real oh, right, okay. she went door knocking and she calls yeah. me and she goes, I'm, or no, he called me. He called me. He goes, I'm here with your mom. I'm like, what? He goes, I'm with your that's mother. Never, she knocked on my door. That's <laughs> not something you never want to hear. No, no, <laughs> not, not coming from him. Not coming from him. Not coming from him. Yeah, roadie type. And my that's mom is you want to hear. I'm mostly sober mom. I mean, I knew he wasn't, you know, but, <laughs> but he would do yeah, a bunch I'll tell of dancing. Oh, he was great. We, we, cause, cause while we were rehearsing, we had a, I had a, a, a hotel to stay in and we'd rehearse. And then Davey had taken me to his local bar, which was a, a fantastic bar. Oh, out by well, here. Very big. But yeah. And, and it was just full of local people. It's called Pickwick's Pub. One, that's the one. That's I'm it. sure one of the girls behind there was from England, and so he took her, me there. right, the whole family's English, yeah. Yeah, he took me there one night, and you know we were there for a lot, quite a while, and I got to know everyone there. But it was like he's he's such a great guy to tour with as well. He was fantastic, Dave. So the guy who, who played yeah. there for forever, his name is Gary Ballin, who also did Air Supply wow. with Davy Kirkwood, with Dave, yeah, yeah. Was but that wasn't with you, Ken. No, I don't think so. I want to say like uh, 1980 or something. I, maybe I'm wrong. I yeah, I was. Yeah, I was 88. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. God rest you, Dave. Wherever you are, I, I shall have some tea. <laughs> yeah, fun guy, man. I loved. I loved hanging out with that guy. He would get. We yeah. did poison, and he'd get. He'd get blitzed in the middle of the day, and he he would yell at you. Know, this, this isn't a fucking band. You know, this is bullshit. You guys, think <laughs> Motley Crue. They had oh, fu yeah, they have yeah, fucking yeah. women. They have women everywhere. It's poison. It's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> I'd be like, why are you always so angry? <laughs> you know, Scottish. what are you Scottish? <laughs> yeah, why? It's Scottish. It's Scottish. It's not like you're out there pulling women anyway. You're just sitting here drinking, <laughs> talking shit all day. What's the difference? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah, Scottish, <laughs> man. Some... See yeah. you, Jimmy. Don't call me. I come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. You come for the paint. Yeah. yeah, I'll come for a point. It's good because no fucking else does around here. I'm fucking me. You know, it was a drink. I said you got to put with that shitty American headache beer as well. Oh. <laughs> you know, it was funny in my in the in my book. We did one where we were in Botanow, uh, North Dakota, I think it is, and they wow. have a they have the world's largest turtle. And Davey was like, Davey was in this great mood. He was just amazed. And I'm like, I've never seen you so happy. And he goes, well, who wouldn't love a 20 foot fucking turtle? And yeah. I was like, the point got there, Davey. It is kind of cool. It's kind of neat. I've had a turtle's head a few times, but never a 20 foot turtle. That's a big turtle head, my friend. It's a biggie. It's a biggie. So we'll begin at the beginning. So how did you guys both get into the industry? We'll go with Ken first. We'll see with Ken. How, how did you begin? Uh, I started out as a really, really bad guitar player. 
And it was only a matter of time before I figured out this, this isn't going anywhere. So back when I was a kid, I'm from Long Island, New York. Oh, okay. Uh, the bar scene was amazing from a hundred square foot shack to a thousand seater. If there was a spot to put a place to play, they, they there was somebody playing. And uh, I started kind of, you know, shuffling along roadie style and started learning this and that. And that, those were back in the days where you did everything. You loaded in PA, lights, staging. I mean, it was crazy, but you learned, you know. I was yeah. like 15 and I was doing it, you know, uh, some really good bands, bands, well, Twisted Sister. I only wow. did a few with them, but, you know, there was that level of stuff going on. So I started doing that and it made money. Money came in instead of going out. And I loved, I, I realized I loved doing it. And I kind of ended up gravitating over the back line while I was, you know, still a kid. And it just kind of went from there. Um, I had a still have your first. Uh, you still have your first guitar? Oh, yeah. I, I don't part yeah. with them. I've got, it's an Ibanez Rocket Roll, the, the flying V that they made. Oh, cool. And, oh, and it is, it's, it's, I had EMGs put in it back in the, when EMGs first right. came out and it sounds awesome still. Nice. But anyway, um, I, I started, uh, you know, I kept doing the club stuff and where I worked was um, like an automotive district where body shops and chopping places and all were. And one of the guys that, that, one of the welders from across the street was the same as me. He was a, a kid trying to break in and he had gotten a gig with white lion. Oh. And meanwhile, he had been working for Debbie Gibson on weekends because she was still in high school. And he asked me to cover his Gibson gigs while he, cause he was going out for like two months with white lion. So I said, of course, you know, I mean, they gave us, they paid us to rehearse. They put food out. It was like, mm -hmm. I, wow. <laughs> I, I, I found the promised land and uh, the promise. What kind of food was it? You get fed and paid De right? deli tray, which I love sandwiches. Yeah. I'm a sandwich you know, guy. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was going to so, do it, uh, the best. That's the best meal. It's just a sandwich, but then you get a, you get an ice cream sandwich for dessert. So you double up on sandwiches and then you're perfection. Yeah. So anyway, this guy Pugsley asked me to cover the gigs and I did. I just took, you know, left early from my day job on the weekends. And then Debbie graduated high school. And I knew the gig was up for grabs because Pugsley had already fucked up. And I managed to score that gig. And I was playing Sheds my first tour. I was like wow. 21, 22. Wow. And we were Good. doing, you know, a full on Shed tour. And I think I was making 600 bucks a week. And this is, you know, I just gotten done making $8 an hour. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And like, this is where I want to be. And yeah. it was awesome. And it, it, it landed from one to the, uh, to the next, to the next. It never stopped. I left Debbie Gibson, literally went straight to LA and started with air supply home for Christmas, rehearsing with the bangles. It just, it didn't yeah. stop. And then I met Batty on Alice Cooper Could be a trash. and, uh, yeah, the trash mm -hmm. tour. Mm -hmm. I read that Lemmy, one of Lemmy's favorite uh, or biggest influences with Debbie Gibson. I read it in the uh, I read it in the, the music. <laughs> he, liked Abba, he, he liked Abba as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Kind of with women in it. Well, Debbie's <laughs> one of my biggest influences. She's a millionaire by the time she's 19. God bless yeah. her. I got no yeah, big yeah. argument with her mom. <laughs> yeah. That was easy to do back in the day. That was oh, really man. We got it. Yeah, I was going to I was going to cast her in a film. She's going to end uh no, it's a low budget film. There wasn't a lot of money. And so her mom calls me to try and get more money. And I'm like, you know, I'm already giving up part of my pay. I don't even, I don't, I don't know. And she's like, well, you know, Debbie. And she goes through her, her daughter's accomplishments, which were cool, by the way. So yeah, she goes through her daughter's cool. accomplishments. I'm like, well, as a mother, you should be very proud. <laughs> God, that was the worst thing. She was so fucking pissed off, man. So the agent calls me, he goes, deal's done. Deal's fucking done. Cause he represented both of us at the time. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I didn't try to be rude to the lady. She should no. be proud of her. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. And he's like, the deal's done. She's not going to be in your movie. I'm, I'm killing this. Okay. 
So last time, and then uh, Deborah, she likes to be called Deborah. So the next time I yeah. saw her, she was cool. It was cool. She was all right. <laughs> but yeah, you got I, on. You got on good with with Deborah Gibson, didn't you, Ken? I think you got on really well with her. Oh yeah, I'm you still get, friends yeah. with the family. Yeah, you that's, got a lot that's of how they were. The, yeah. it, the people that started out back in the high school days, they have always trusted to be around her. Yeah. Um, I mean, you said I, that I, when I first met you, you were saying that about her, that it was pretty close community, but it was very much family. And if you're in that family. That and cool, and yeah. in between tours, if I needed work, they would find work for me to do around the house and pay me a hundred bucks a day. Oh yeah. That's cool. They I mean, need that. Yeah. No, no, no they're, they're, was, uh, what, they were wonderful nice. to me. Um, mm. That's all, you know, that's all I would ever say because they mm. were, they went from working class, regular people to multimillionaires. And f- as far as their relationship with me, never changed. Yeah, it's cool. So, mm. well, if you think about it, you're both kids. She graduates high school. She's what, 18? You're only 21. I mean, you're kind of in yeah. the same boat. It's not like there's big. So you kind of grew up together. It mm. was funny that on the tour, you had a lot of old road dogs. You mean, you know, everything. And everybody treated her like their little sister. Nothing yeah. but respect. Stagehand yeah. passed a comment that it was taken care of pretty quickly. I mean, the whole the whole crew mm. was, was like just the crew of big brothers. And I think that's what she needed for the first one. It's got to be intimidating. You're a kid. You know, you're out of high school. It's all exciting and everything. But it's a big deal. Youngest, <laughs> youngest yeah. person to write, produce a uh, number one hit. 17 years old. That's neat. I just it's bad. Yeah. But I just think of remember Bill Hicks, the comedian Bill Hicks. Yeah, you know, there was he had this whole rant. He would go on and he'd say, uh, you know, Debbie Gibson, go back to the mall you spawned from. But the mm-hmm. idea was, you know, more drugs for bands. They're better. They sound better. Give them drugs. Give them drugs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, poor Bill died early, though. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's going to know when to stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking mm-hmm. of drug addict bands. So how did you get going back? <laughs> <laughs> that is the other Pretty, side of, yeah. of the coin. Uh, the other side. So- well, <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I mean, if you come from, if you come from Birmingham, yeah. you're gonna have it, it's gonna be in your blood music because because it's Birmingham and Black Sabbath and Zeppelin and in the in the West Midlands of Judas Priest and you know, like all the way through we got Wolfsbane. Yeah, everybody, everybody's Slade, and then coming from an Irish family, you're gonna have music in your blood. Sure, and. I never really, I mean, I never really played anything. But when I was, I always looked at guitars and I was, when I was 17, I bought myself my first guitar. And yes, I've still got it. Nice. 40 pound B&M classical concert thing. And, and believe it or not, learned some chords. I thought I'll get an ABBA book of chords. I've still got that too. And then I get home and my oldest sister said, if you want to learn to play guitar, you got to listen to this. And I've still got this here. She gave me uh, an LP of Hank Williams. Oh, neat. Said, learn to play those. I got them. You know, you know, here, I'll show you something. I've got to learn Black Sabbath, you know, and all this. But he's gone on the man. He's gone on the. I've got, I've got to show you Ken something here. Hold on. I'm going to off mic there a bit there. Wait a bit. Hold on. No, I've heard you say that before, Batty. I've got to show Ken something, and it's never gone well. Original Hank Williams from uh, just, Holy shit. Show what, 1930 Holy something. Turns back the road Holy shit! Wow. Cool. Let's show that. Let's see 1949. that again. 1949. 1949. Hank Williams poster. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, now you see. There you cool, go. Right? See, if you want to learn guitar, you got to learn that. And if you want to read a good book, you got to read that. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and it's a follow-up by Jeff Mann, the drum tech. But, but I mean, and, I mean and Batty next. was so literate. <laughs> yeah. Batty's next. It's got lots of pictures in it. You got a lot of pictures in it. And mine's yeah, next. Yeah, I'm on the trio one because it's on the way. For those <laughs> listening, that was Ken's book he just held up. But yeah, the, uh, I don't know. It didn't look like it was very well read. That looks pretty new still there. Are you saving it? <laughs> no, no, it's well, well read because I, I got it online, didn't I, Ken? I downloaded it and I only got this couple of months ago and and i'll tell you what this was like gold dust to find and i even texted you ken didn't i say i found a hard copy of it and it's in pristine condition because ken i know you don't like dog eared pages that's don't right like that. you hate, that. You hate right. that this is pristine and yeah yeah I'm, I'm going it's like that's there's bits in there that uh are 
jogging my memory for my book because we had, I yeah. mean, we had some great times together, you know. Oh, we did I mean, absolutely. When, when I, I pretty, it's it's weird, me and Ken never met because the the, the path we took was the same, but three thousand miles apart. Yeah. yeah, and 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 I did local band. I was I left school and I wanted to be a draftsman, pens and papers and drawing buildings and stuff. And I did for six years. I've still got the drawings here, and they look like works of art. So this uh, day, there's this other guy. His name's John Lennon, and he kind of he did yeah. a little bit of drawing too. Uh, maybe did drawing. He was yeah. He was he was more of a like drawer. I was more technical, like. You know, it, engines and things. Oh, you're like clearly that. much more talented yeah. than John Lennon. Yeah, for I couldn't, sure. I couldn't yeah. do like I couldn't sketch like he could or any of that. No, I'm not. And and next door to where I worked, I was getting, I was getting thirty pound a week as a, a trainee draftsman. All right. And and I was playing in an Irish country band two nights a week at the weekend, and I was getting sixty pounds. And you're playing thought, guitar. You're playing guitar, right? Yeah. yeah. And I thought there's something wrong here. Playing country and western and I'm getting twice as much as I am doing this uh, building sites and drawing all these great drawings. And then next door to where I worked, a local band who were doing really well, but there was an abattoir next door and used to, you know, kill things. And, and, and I look out the window one day and I see one of these guys with a wheelbarrow and I'm like, that's Brian from UB40, who were like huge then. They bought that place, turned it into a studio, and there's me looking at my drawing board, looking out the window, and I'm thinking... No, something's wrong here. So I got my all my drawing tools together, put them in a plastic bag in my lunch hour, and said to the secretary, "I'll see you. I'm going off tour in the world." And she went, "Good luck, Kev." <laughs> and I sent, <laughs> sent sent him a postcard a few weeks later from Israel with haircut 100. But th there was a gap there. I while I was drafting for five years, I used to go to pubs and watch pub bands. And sure. there's one particular one particular band in Birmingham that were called Mean Street Dealers. And I used to watch them every Monday. And so whenever I could watch them, I'd watch them. And I just liked the, how they'd plug things in and what the knobs did on the desk and all this stuff. I mean, family were very uh, engineer orientated and keep things going like the television and the what, whatever. And I was into all that. And one night they got stuck. There were two guys, Brian, Brian Evans, who's no longer with us, bless him, and Pete Russell, who's a, one of the best sound engineers out there. And they said, "Do you know what backline is?" I went, "Well, yeah, it's all the it's all that gear on stage, all the amplifiers and the drums and the, all that." And they went, "Do you know what the lemon is?" I said, "The lemon's the van outside." And they went, "Very good. All the backline goes in the lemon." <laughs> and that was it. I, got, I was a roadie then. I, that was that. That's it. I went touring all over with them. I still see them today. They're still around. And I think, like Ken, you, when you start doing things. People go, yeah, give him a – he's good. Give him a try. Yeah. He can get the yep. gear in. He knows what the gear is. He knows which way up it goes, and he knows what the flashing lights do, and he can plug in to out and out to in and get it going. And they give you a break. They just give you a break. Same with, like, Ruby Turner. I got a break doing her uh, back line, and then the sound engineer went off to Holland, and they all said, you can do it. You've been with us a few weeks. You can do that. And I was thrown in at the deep end doing Ruby for, for four to five years all over the place. And again, that stepped up to them saying to a guy, "Come and look at this guy we've got. He does sand and backline all at one one place in Birmingham, Cannon Hill Park." And he came up to me, Steve Gonzo Smith, great monitor engineer, still out there. And he said, uh, "Have you got a passport?" I said, uh, "No." He said, "Get one. I've got a gig for you doing drums and percussion." And I'm thinking, just two things. That's great. He said, uh, "We're going to America. It's with uh, Haircut 100." <laughs> massive pop band and my very first gig in america very first time i set foot in america was radio city music hall oh cool and it's like yeah this is the union cruise by the way you soon find yeah. out what a union cruise right ken and the very oh, next yeah. two, two nights later was the ritz and i know ken played at the ritz and i'm thinking how yeah. we never met Ken done the Ritz. You've done the Ritz loads of times, Ken. Haven't you? Oh, the old Ritz. I was always yeah, in there, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, well, we, we kind of had 3,000 miles apart. We had the same kind of thing going on with bands and, and just like somebody giving you a break and you yeah. get a bit more of a reputation and get a bit more and you can drive a bit and you can set everything up and everybody's cool that you know what's going on on stage. And if something goes wrong, you'll put it right without a fuss. And it, yeah. it's like that, isn't it, Ken? It just builds and builds and builds. And... 
I mean, my first coup tour, I'd never met this guy called Steve Botting. Can yeah. you and I got a phone call. I'm sat at home at my mum's in Birmingham, and I get a phone call. Can you can you come to Paris tonight? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, Alice Cooper. Oh, right. Okay. I just saw that gig at the NEC two weeks ago. Yeah, we need someone to do all the guitars, the keyboards, and well, basically, we've got a drum tech, and we need a tech to do the rest of the back line. All the yeah. And I fly out there, and I meet them, and then they tell me you got to wear this ugly mask when you go on to change a guitar and you got to wear a coat walk with a limp and you know kick alice once in a while yeah and 87 raise your fist and yell and i did that it's great that's where i met john chizuli and tim Gallup, two great guys and dancer and you know all these people and yeah. the next tour i get called back and i'm doing the base uh, i'm doing al petrelli from your neck of the woods because Again, I was in Australia with Debbie Gibson. Were well, you were that's right, out. yeah. You were with Debbie Gibson. They got a guy over in England who's American called Dutch Dutch Michaels. Great, great tech. And he's the first me- American I'd ever hear, heard in London because he was always seen to be at the rehearsal rooms Dutch. And Dutch is still going. He's great. But guy. but on the on that one, they brought in somebody else to to hold the gig for me. Because Al wanted me. I did I did Al and Dutch did T Bone and Pete. And then when you came back, I went and did T Bone and Pete on stage right. Yeah. And you, but and I mean they, they held yeah. it for me and and yeah, you know yeah. as well as I yeah. do, if if you were on the last tour, you're the first phone call for this tour. Correct. And that was my first tour was raise your fist and yell. And guess what? Two years later, they give me a call and go, Hey, it's Coop again. You want to come back out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they I said never... you're doing this guy, you know, and then when Ken Barr, you've never met Ken, no, I don't know. Ken will be coming over and he'll be doing some of it and then you can go stage right and do that. And thanks, Dutch. Because I Alex remember Cooper. there was, there was for, I think it was when, with Steph Burns on the Stupid yeah. Tour. Stupid, he wanted yeah. his own guy. That's and he tried, he tried strong arming them like, well, I don't know if I can do the tour without my guy and they, they were like all right bugger off <laughs> don't do the tour then see you later yeah <laughs> shut the door on your way out will you <laughs> and then of course like oh no no i'm sure your guy is fine i'm sure he's fine oh it'll be great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's the thing about the i mean that's the thing about coop the coop the coop yeah. family is when you you get the call i mean and alice yeah. is like just a total and, sweet and there's no yeah. difference in band and crew first is first yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, great company. Coop's yeah. great, man. He's did great. one? Did either? Did you, uh, Eric Dover? Did you do that? Did you work with him with Alice Cooper? No, he came in after I I left or in between. Um, I did. I did uh, ninety ninety one. Um, ninety five. We went to South America. Yeah, and then ninety six. I came out. He he falls in there somewhere, but no, I didn't work with Eric Dover. No, I didn't do that. No, the only Eric I was with was with Shirinian, <laughs> our good friend. Yeah, Caligula. <laughs> Derek, Derek, Derek Caligula and, uh, and Eric uh, Eric Singer on drums, great drummer. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah who I ended up drum teching for. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, the great guy. Well, those Coop guys are great. You know, they're so cool. You know. So I read yeah. online here. So you got the name Batty because you're the one who threw the bat at Ozzy Osbourne? No, that's for now. <laughs> well, I've never heard that. I do that. No, I've never done. He's from Birmingham. I wouldn't do that. Oh, no, he's an Aston Villa fan, and I'm a Birmingham City fan. You know, I wouldn't throw a bat at him. You wouldn't throw um, a bat. No, the, it, that'll be in the book because there's probably only three or four people that know how I got that name, and they are definitely from Birmingham and Wolverhampton. No, and one I know how. Did I tell one you? American, one American knows how. <laughs> oh, and one American. I must have trusted you. Well, I do trust you, Ken. You know, oh, yeah. and, and it's in the book that is. But yeah, yeah, I didn't. It's it's not actually. It's nice to think that I might have thrown the bat. That he, you know. <laughs> no, me and Ozzy, well, I've I've toured with Ozzy, and then he's great, man. He's great. I've seen him some fully shades of grey and green in the mornings, and you know. He's, he's I'm a old. fan. I thought they were cool. Him and Sharon guy, too. Sharon was really good. Yeah. Nice. I've got yeah. a good Ozzy story. What he got? <laughs> <laughs> better fact, than daddy's never... nickname <laughs> uh, no 
we were doing South America, Monsters of Rock, Alice Cooper, yeah, Ozzy, Megadeth, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So we're finished. Our stuff's in the truck. And I'm hanging out waiting to watch Ozzy. So I'm upstage, right? And I see a square taped to the floor. Yeah. And I thought to myself, that, <laughs> that looks like a good place to stand. Don't leave the square. Don't leave the square. <laughs> so I'm in the square. And all of a sudden, the lights go down, and I'm moving. That was, that was Ozzy's preset to, to where to be, and I'm standing in it. And you like, was it, was it the same thing where the security. tape the tape is like this thick? Oh, so all of a sudden, you're on stage. Like, here's the square. It's like... <laughs> so never stand in the square, because there. it's usually for Ozzy. Yeah. Well, when I when I was with uh, with Maiden, uh, Yannick, I was with Yannick for thirteen years, and and his his stack of cabinets are all live, apart from the one on the end. They are loaded. They're loaded cabs. You can plug them in and use them, but those are for him to come and smash the shit out of Hendrix style with his guitars, and we'd put them back up, and you know, and I would put behind those cabinets. I'd put a massive big square. And in there, I'd write, do not stand here during showtime. And the crew knew it. They, yeah, great, you know, it's all right. It became a bit of a joke, but everybody knew why. And one night, uh, Nico's wife stood there, and I was tapping her on the shoulder going, sweet pea, don't stand there. <laughs> don't, it'd be all right, be all right, don't. And I give up in the end. I went, no, no, no. Nico's looking down going, don't, don't stand there. I go off. And Yannick comes pelting past I might have to grab her, <laughs> pull her out of the way as the cabs go flying. <laughs> it's not. I told you not to stand there. It's real. <laughs> he Survival goes mad. The roadie fittest. He knocks him over. Nico's like, oh, thanks, Batty. <laughs> Saving his wife. <laughs> Another square behind there. And everyone's like, what's that empty square behind the stacks for? Well, we all knew, all the back line and all the crew knew. And someone would stand there. The manager stood there one night. I didn't say anything i'll even cop it you know big rod you should know better yeah you should know better yeah just have it you know you try and tell yannick don't yannick will just do it anyway because he knows someone's behind there so he's going to do it you know part of the show great. show must go on yeah it, does, right. yeah it must go on he was here yeah, sound yannick sound guy to work for brilliant what was yeah. the other one so I, I did cheat i actually listened to some other stuff with both of you guys but the one with the the iron cross on the amps was good that's good Oh, with Lemmy, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's the, yeah. Story. I mean, I mean, it's kind of, it's 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 kind of a rite of passage, I think, in this side of the pond, anyway. That if you work with Motorhead, that's that's where you're gonna. If you work with Debbie Gibson, you got to work with Motorhead at some point. You've that's it. You've done yeah. it. Or you work for Tapao or Haircut One Hundred. When you work for Motorhead, that's it. Doesn't matter yeah. who else. George Harrison, yeah, great. Jeff, yeah, great. Yeah, Motorhead. No, no, no. Beginning. Operation Rock and Roll. In Operation Rock and Roll. 91. Yeah. Every day I'm at my area tuning guitars right before Motorhead goes on. And there's Lemmy telling me Hendrix stories the whole time. Yeah. Great. Doesn't guy, get man. better than that. And no. I mean, I mean, what a great guy. He, he didn't did. care about his gig or, you know, I'm Lemmy from yeah. Motorhead. It's like, did no. you know I was a roadie for Hendrix? I'm like, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you told yeah. me yesterday, but yeah, and it's great. You never, I, I never worked for Hendrix, but I worked for his roadie. Yeah, <laughs> you know that would have been a good shirt. That would have yeah. been an awesome shirt. Yeah, I mean, the thing but, with the crosses were we were at a, we were at a gig in uh, in Europe. We were doing Europe, and on his cabs, everybody knows he has those cabs. He has big like, iron German crosses, real the real deal, and they're, they're bolted in the centre of the speakers on the cabinets and. Uh, and one day, halfway through this show, I'm sound checking it, and I'm thinking, "What's that rat? What's that rattling?" And I walk over to the cabinets, thinking it's the speakers or the the mountains, and it's these iron crosses, these German iron crosses. They're all a bit loose. Oh, right now. So I get a screwdriver out and I tighten them all up, and thinking, "There you go, that's that." Then they forget all about it. An hour later, Lemmy walks in. He's, I tell you, man, the sound wise, he's got it. He walks up to his amps, he turns everything full up rubs his hand across him and starts thrashing away. And then he stopped in, he walked over to his cabs, looked at them, and went straight for the iron crosses and grabbed them, and they didn't move, and he went, Bat! I went, yeah, 
do you tighten these iron crosses up? I went, yeah, they were making loads of noise. He went, it's part of me sound, fucking undo them again. <laughs> I can love it. Well, I go back and, loosen them all up. and then they start doing your sound check, loosening iron crosses off, going, is that all right, Lemon? No, me loosen them some more. Man. How's that? Yeah, that's fucking, that's half me sound. Part of me sound, man. <laughs> okay. Not uh, the first rehearsal I did with them. John Henry's walk in there. I knew them all. Walked in the room. They're all in there. They've been around the pub. I go around the pub and have a pint with them and come back in. Then he puts on his guitar, starts thrashing away, and two big puffs of smoke out of his two amps. He just takes his guitar off. Batty! Oh, yeah, I know, Lem. Yeah. We'll be round in the pub. <laughs> his amps just blew up. And you take these things apart, and the world and its mother's been inside these amps. There's all sorts of stuff going on in there. I found Shergar's saddle in one of them or something. You know, he's just full of stuff. Spend an hour fixing them. Go back around the pub. They're all, yeah, I've done the amps. <laughs> back to rehearsals. Yeah. Thrash away, five minutes. Ah, let's go back to the pub. Great band to work for. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, good, good people. Be brilliant. Oh, great people. Ken, you're right. Really good people. Really good. I mean, you know, let me. You, do you re- do you remember Phil Campbell and the and the vodka? Do you remember that story? No, the vodka. Oh, well, yeah, Phil Phil Campbell used to bring out a, a solo cup full of vodka and, and oh, cranberry. Oh yeah, yeah. And he'd put it on his amp stage mm. right. You would come over and steal it. That's and right. And drink oh, yeah, it. Yeah, and drink it. Yeah. So instead of being a douchebag, he just started bringing out two. Yeah. One for you and one for him. I'm like, yeah. that's a guy I would work for. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how did he I catch you? Now, yeah. How did he how did he know it was you drinking it? Uh, I was a I was a bit slow one night. <laughs> no, no, was... Batty would Batty would stand there and do this while that's, he was yeah. drinking it. Oh, yeah. But didn't want to say that guy. Oh, mm. You know, there's was so Dean DeLeo was to switch up a tad. So I was uh he 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 would drink wine, red wine in uh or maybe it was white wine. He would drink wine and, it, you know, come here, come here. And I would, you know, what do you want? So I went up and he, he grabbed me. He dipped me on the stage and he kissed me right on the lips. And I, I'm, I'm 22. I'm just so pissed off with him. <laughs> and I, and I stood up and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to tell your wife. And they stopped the show, Scott and everybody. They're all laughing. Like, what the fuck was that? You know, I'm going to tell your wife. <laughs> So for like, I should have shut up, man. I had at least a solid week and everyone winding me up all week. I'm going to tell your wife, fuck you. Fuck you. So it was like a week later and he's like, come here, come here. I'm like, no, man, I'm not coming anywhere. I'm like, no, you do your own shit. I'm not helping you with nothing. So what it was is he uh, wore a beanie that actually said queer. He wore this beanie and he wanted to hand me the beanie so that he didn't lose the beanie. And I was like, okay. And I would tell people the worst part is his lips were so soft. Oh, oh yeah, that's God. it. Yeah, yeah, it lifts oh, you so soft. Oh, See, I, I never, livid. I never got any of that, so I wouldn't. Oh, know. how unfortunate for you! <laughs> I think that, I think that the, the the ultimate Lemmy one was the, we were on. I was working for Maiden, and it was Monsters of Rock in Europe, and we were in uh, Germany, and there was Maiden, Motorhead. Uh, I can't think it was might have been the Almighty as well. We, Ken knows a great band. Oh, those. Yeah, but, Ricky has a new record yeah. out, by the way. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. It's worth it's worth a half. Actually, I know we're jumping topic. Coop's new record. Yeah. Not only did it is it awesome, went to number one. I saw that. And oh, all, yeah. cool. Yeah. He's, yeah anyway, he's sorry. There. Go ahead. Go back. They to never me. stop. Uh, Ricky never stops. He's great, man. And uh, that was a great band, the Almighty. I love that band. Oh hell yeah. And they, they, we were doing Europe and this made, uh, Maiden and then Motorhead and, and um, Hobbsy came up to Hobbsy was made, um, Motorhead's tour manager and everything and the sound guy and and he came up to me and he, I'm doing Yannick's guitars and was, and he came up in the after he went um, uh, let me let me might be looking for you when he uh, when he turns up I'll just just to let you know. And I said, what's he want? I don't know him anything. What's he want? And he said, um, um, his roadie ran off last night. <laughs> I said, he, his roadie is about 14. He's from Brazil. He ran off. Like, We're in Europe. What's he know? He's never been out of Sao Paulo. What do you mean he's run off? He said, well, he, he got off the bus in the dark in the middle of Germany and he ran off and we don't know where he is. And like, so Lemmy wants me to do his guitars. Is that the, what you're saying? He went, Yes, I just thought I'd pre-warn you. I went, you don't have to pre-warn. I'll take care of him when he turns up. 
And a couple of hours later, Hobbsy comes back. He goes, um, "Let me, let me see. He's in the, he's in the post in the dressing room." And I thought, right, I'll do a flash art. If you watch Black Adder, there's a character called Flash Art, and he's like, "Ah, ha, ha, I'm back," and kicks doors open and stuff. And I thought, I'll do a flash art on it, and I kick the dressing room door open. Ah, ha, ah, afternoon, ladies. Nice, yeah, all right, Lem. And there's Lemmy sat on this couch, just like this. Two. Two scantily clad young ladies from a band I've never heard of and still haven't called Texas Pussy. These <laughs> ladies from Texas Pussy. I went um, and on him is a there's a coffee table in front of him with a like a gallon of Jack Daniels and two beers and a couple of cups. I said, I hear you're looking for me, Lemmy. Uh, I don't know you anything, do I? He went, No, no. Um, I was wondering if you'd uh, if you could uh, if I could do your guitars, perhaps. Yeah. Was that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doing my guitar for the rest of the tour. You know, it's only a week left. I'm like, okay, uh, why is that then? He went to uh, Rodi ran away. I said, what? Rodi ran away. I said, you Rodi ran away. He's up in the middle of Germany. <laughs> Two o'clock this morning. Got off the bus and did one. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I went. Yeah, well, you obviously weren't plying him with enough of whatever to keep him on the bus, were you? And I said, he's a lovely lad. He's only he's from Brazil. Forty. What's he going to know about over here? I don't know, but uh, we had a look for him, but we couldn't find him. <laughs> I said, "I said, all right, 50 quid a gig then, and this, and I reached over and grabbed his gallon of Jack off the table. I said, and this, and he went, hold on, it's the first time I've ever seen him look, look like a puppy dog always going, oh, hang on, don't take me Jack. <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll point, like, there you go, put it red. Afternoon, ladies, nice to meet you. See you later. And that nice... Yannick fell off the stage and knocked himself out, and that was the last gig of the tour. So he still owes me 50 quid I'm never going to see, am I, if you're up there? Might be hard <laughs> now. Yeah, I don't know. It might be tough. What was it? He passed yeah. away. He did uh, Bullets, right? His ashes are in Bullets that he gave bullets, to Bullets, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. yeah family yeah, members. Yeah. And... yeah, and all that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I used to see him all the time because yeah. uh, I live in LA. So on no, Sunday, Lemmy, it might be sawdust or something. No, in Lemmy, put him in sword, give him that. Yeah. It was a mix, mixed it together. Yeah, mixed, yeah. Probably speed. And, and that. I got some photos somewhere. I got to find them, but it's uh, Tony Iommi and Ozzy rolling joints uh, in the seventies backstage. Oh, that's old. Yeah, that's they're really they're, yeah. they're these great photos. Obviously, I, not... I met Lemmy in the, in eighty two. And he was he was in a club in London. The our story it was a, a, a it was actually a theatre. We were doing a gig there, and my pal here in Birmingham, Kenny knows him, Pedro, had toured oh, yeah. with Mo, toured, toured with Mo said in the seventies, and and he said, oh, Lemmy's here. Oh, great, Lemmy, meet Lemmy. He said, go and play that game with him, the game of asteroids, and you sit there and you play. Well, I didn't realise at the time, Lem, like Lemmy is king of all that. You know, he was you could stay there for hours on one. 10p coin and play all night and i sat there for hours watching him play this asteroid game thinking when's he going to be my fucking game? <laughs> and you know you lost him you oh, kid you'll go put another one in i sat there for hours with lemmy but that to me then that was like it's lemmy i'm just sitting here with him you know yeah. years down the road and he never forgot that he never sort of you were the little git in the club yeah right here yeah, now and you know you're doing the guitars for you great guy Great I'd go to the Rainbow a lot where he was just by himself at the bar. Yeah. He yeah. didn't have a problem yeah, with yeah. that, I don't think. No, not at all, no. No, yeah. and I, I I always, I've always said that at the time I worked for him or came across him or the time they were on tours with us, I never saw him refuse or not give an autograph or speak, stop and speak to fans. Yeah. Always had, always had time, you know, always had time. And there was no, none of this bullshit about him. He was just straight. I love, he used to sing uh, the Beatles on Sunset. He'd go into a place called the Cat Club, and Cat, yeah. uh, and he'd he'd sing a uh, uh, Revolution usually. And it was just, yeah. uh, oh, it was really cool to hear him uh, sing the Beatles stuff. Oh, he loves all that, you know. I mean, everyone thinks it's like what he he's playing a lot loud and blow your ears out. And everything. let me let me like it. He loved the Beatles, loved Hendrix, obviously. But yeah, yeah, big Beatles fan, and he loves Abba. There you go. <laughs> Abba and the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, okay. I want to hear Motorhead yeah. cover an Abba song. Yeah, would have been great, wouldn't he? <laughs> I think he just liked the girls. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I get it. Why? Fantastic guy. Fantastic. Was it the guy. blonde one? I think it's the blonde girl. She she married one of her stalker. She married the fella. She? Yeah. That wasn't that the other guy in the band, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was the guy. It was the other book, the tall guy. <laughs> never did that, but that would have been interesting doing that to her. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm-hmm. What is it like toying with like a Debbie Gibson when she's still in high school? I mean, it really is a kid. You're a kid. You're young. Like I said, you're young yeah. too. But I mean, I would think you'd have a little bit more nurturing because. Oh, that's what I said. I was saying before we, we were all big, old, big brothers, older brothers to her. Um, you know, she would like she had millions coming in, but because of her age, she just got paid per diem like the rest of us. She didn't get wow. any any of the big loot yet. I mean, she eventually wow. did, but hold on. I'm, but yeah, I mean, she was. I remember one time. She came running into Soundcheck with a pair of bowling shoes she had bought with her own cash, and she wore them. She <laughs> thought this was this was the best thing ever. It's like she had money to buy used bowling shoes. Only wow. <laughs> so she was a sweetheart, and like I said, we were all big brothers, and they're good people. They're very good people. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I did like about music people in general was uh, yeah, pretty good, solid. <laughs> solid good you know straight shootings type stuff uh, <clears throat> i did a film for a few minutes and i did a few interviews and they said uh, what's the difference with the film and the music industry was one of the questions i'm like well in the film industry you guys do a little bit of cocaine you think you're all cool we do heroin till we fucking die <laughs> and the lady just sat there she's like oh <laughs> and then, and then ah, well. the next one was um it was a stupid, there was just like silly questions, but yeah, the, the next one, I'm like, well, the honest, the, the honest goodness is in the music industry, if they're going to fire you, they say you're fired in the, in the film industry, you guys play all these games, but it's not really true. Cause you get the letter underneath the, you get the airplane slip underneath the door in the morning, actually, isn't it? And you get the security yeah. guys to walk you yeah. out. So I don't know, maybe, seat, maybe uh, usually it's seat or oil, huh? Seat or oil. What? which, which do you want a seat? A window seat or an aisle seat on the plane. What plane? You're fired. <laughs> you're fired. And you were I... lucky if it window or you were lucky if it was a plane and not a greyhound. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Or can I borrow your money? Can I borrow your per diem? Yeah. I'll pay National you back Express. next week. <laughs> yeah. National yeah. Express in England or a train in England. Wow. Fool. No, forget that. <laughs> you got any good bad company stuff? I, I do like them. Oh, yeah. Oh, blimey. That was a... <laughs> They were a great band to work for. And that was that, yes, when I first worked with them, Robbie Price was doing, um, he'd been with Iron Maiden for years, Robbie. He does Davies guitars. We also worked with lots of other bands, and he was doing The Cult at the time. And he said, uh, I, I do bad company, and I've put your name forward. And you, you probably know some of them, but you know, you do. I'm mean, Garrett, great, yeah. Uh, go down to London, John Henry's, they'll be rehearsing there. And, uh, yeah, the usual stuff. I turn up and, and, and Ken will know this. When you when you walk in a rehearsal room and it's like the band's set up, there's no one there. You walk in and it's it's a dead room, it's got carpet or whatever out the wall. But there's this you can hear this hum of the amps. And it, yeah. it's got a it's got a smell of it's got a smell of those amps and probably cigarettes and maybe dope as well and booze. But there's no one in there and it's all humming away and you think it's like walking into the, the belly of the beast. It is. It is the belly of the beast of the tour shut, that's you, about to come. You know, you close that door behind you and it's just silent, apart from this of the amps and just the smell. And it's like it's waiting to attack you. They're not there. They're John. They're around. I was going out and I was a bad company. And the, the girl at reception said, you know where they are, Batty. I went around the corner in the pub. She went, yeah, so I'll go in. Yeah, carry on. And I look at the gear and the equipment. I'm doing the guitars for, for Dave uh, Colwell Bucket and Rick Wills on bass and you're walking around I'll and right Mick back. Ralph's, and, you know, and Mick Ralph's there and whatnot. And um, they've got some great guitars, some beautiful guitars. And I sit, sit down on the drum riser and um, pick up this acoustic wow. Gibson D45, beautiful, and start playing one of their songs, Seagull, great song. And the door opens, and in they come. <laughs> and there's me. They don't know who I am. I'm sat on the drum riser playing. I'm like, and I stop and I stand up. And Mick Ralph says, No, carry on, boy. That's Seagull. We ain't done that in years. And they all come in and they go, Oh, but yeah, how you doing? How you? And sit down again. And go, Where would carry on, boy? He's like, no. Simon's behind me. He starts playing. Mick starts playing. Rick starts. So they're all of a sudden playing this Seagull. 
one of their oldest songs off uh, Run With The Pack. And I'm sat, I've just met them. I'm sat on the drum riser with one of my favourite, them and Joe Walsh, I grew up listening to. Oh, yeah. I love and, they, and there I am sat there and they go mix going, I can't remember, Simon, I can't remember the words. I went, I know the words. Go on then, boy, me, sing it, sing it. <laughs> so sat on the drum riser singing really bad Seagull with bad company. And that's my, my first meeting with them. I've just, I could have been anybody, you know. But that's I great. That their guitar and I'm like, and they play, they can it, it all stops, you know, we all stop and they get so far. And and then we meet. All right, buddy. Yeah, all right, a lot about, you know, his bucket. No, it's like. So, contrary to popular belief, they're good company. They're great company. They're the they're best. Great company. You know, <laughs> you know and, and the album Company of Strangers, it never was. It was like a company of like really great people. I mean, Robert Hart was singing utterly like st- stunning, you know. You ever meet Joe Walsh? Speaking of Joe Walsh, he was oh man, he probably- yeah. This, I mean, being a Walsh, I got uh, yeah. And the funny thing is, Alice Cooper yeah. introduced me to Joe Walsh. <laughs> so oh, yeah. like yeah, cool. How cool. It, it, he were uh, we we're doing the Alice on tour, and one of the gigs was in Colorado in the Rockies. There's a festival in the Rockies, and Joe Walsh is on Coops. I think a supporting he never does. He Coops opening up in this show. And and Alice said to me, "You got to meet Joe. You're a Walsh. You got to meet him." I'm like, only like, yeah, one of my heroes, you know. And I met Mick now. That's it. Get Joe. And and uh, Coop goes, "Come on." He turns on his bus and he goes, "Come on, let's go." And then there's the security guys outside the bus. And Alice turns up. Yeah, oh, you get. It. Who's this guy? He's with me. We get on the bus and Alice goes, uh, "Hey, Joe, how you doing?" And I'm gonna go because this is uh, Kevin Walsh. He's his baddie, my one that works for my guy. He does the guy guitars. He's a he's a Walsh too, and Joe gets, he shakes my hand and he says, "Hey guy, how are you doing?" There's not many of us left, and I went, "No, not in your shape anyway." So you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he's saying, "I mean, he was great." Sat there having a chat. Got him and Alice would go back, you know, centuries, and that was great. But you know what? And that's before the days of camera phones and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, and and in some ways, that's he, he signed. He got an autograph and. Hey guy, nice to meet you. I went well, you know, maybe one of the days. And people, people say now, who's your best one hundred guitarist or your top ten guitarist? I don't do that now. Kenny might be the same. I think to myself, who would I like to work for? Who I haven't, and it would be Keith Richards, Joe Walsh, yeah. Gilmore, and yeah. Beck, you know, who was and the last Clapton. one? Jeff Beck. Oh, Jeff. Clapton. Dave Gilmore, Joe Walsh, and Keith. Keith Richards. And Toss yeah, Clapton and, onto that pile. And Eric, yeah, he'd throw him in there, you know, and it's like, yeah, that, but Joe was, he was great, man. I was so, it's weird when you meet some someone like, like George Harrison, when I met him, I was just totally, just totally gobsmacked. And it's, it's something that doesn't happen to you. Kenny, you know, you don't really, you don't really get starstruck. You just meet people. I mean, Coop's tremendous, you know. Oh, and, Coop's awesome. And yeah. you meet George Howard, Bob, you, you go in the dressing room with Jeff Lynn's guitar and just say, Jeff, where do you want this on stage or in here? And he's he's doing his hair in a mirror with his back to you. And he goes, oh, yeah, leave it here, Batty. Can you get a guitar for him? And he's pointing behind me. And I'll just walk through a door so it's open. And I look behind the door and sat there. And I thought, you're the Beatle. I look at you. He's a Beatle. You're the, and he said, yeah, well, I uh, I used to be, like, you know, in the, back in the day, like, uh, um Stuck for words. What would you like? And he said, I got a scotch and coke. Got it. <laughs> got him a large scotch and coke. And I said, what would you like to play? And he said, uh, as long as it's got six strings on it and it's almost in tune, that'd be fantastic. I said, Telecaster? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And then after this after this gig here in Birmingham at the NEC, the pair of them took me up to a bar in, in the hotel. Back in the days when there's a, there's a lady behind the bar and she's not stood there like they're watching the lasses. And she looks at me and she looks at Jeff and she looks at George and she says, I know them two. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, you don't need to know. They're buying. Mine's a pint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, but George George Harrison was very generous, very, you know, and, and knew, he knew I was gobsmacked, and like he was just so cool about it. But Kenny will tell you, it's not a, 
it's not something that happens often, and it's not very really, it's not very really cool to be gobsmacked and meeting someone. I mean, when no. I met Coop, I was like, wow, Alice, you know, school's out. Coop was school. one. Oh the, man, for me, for me, the Kiss guys was one as well. Yeah, yeah. Walking into yeah. that rehearsal because I grew up, that was my band. Yeah. I mean, for all their their good and bad and all that, they were the band when I was a kid. And yeah, man. I remember taking a deep breath and opening up the door to the rehearsal place and oh. there's Gene Simmons. Boy. So yeah, there's only a couple of people that like, as you say. Yeah. yeah. So how long did you, uh, you did kiss for years, right? Uh, 92 to 96. Mm. I was Eric's drum tech. And then when Eric wasn't in the band, I was a set carpenter. I built the reunion stage and then I left that because, good Lord, I didn't want any, any part of that. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and I went back on the coop. The coop people heard I was open. Yeah. Come on out. We need you. And yeah. two days later, I was tuning guitars to Welcome to My Nightmare. Yeah. And you know, they say never, never meet your heroes. But I think the people I've met in this business, they've, they've not been disappointed. It's they've not disappointed in the way, like, when you meet your heroes, they can be real assholes or whatever that – than yeah. none of them have, you know. I mean, for, uh, another thing where you you write a passage was working for Black Sabbath. Well, they're from Birmingham, and they yeah. end up working with Tony Iommi and Jeff Nichols. And it's like it was just like they're just brummies, and they were like brummies that I grew up listening to. But it was like, all right, Tone, you know, yeah, you know, just just really strange. You know who they are? They're mega stars, but they're not like that. They're, all right, Patty, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. And you say, I grew up listening to you, and you look at you and go, yeah, well, you probably did, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did you like it? That's all right, you know. And you can have a laugh with people. And Coop's the same. Coop's like, Coop's the biggest player of jokes on people going, you know. And and I hooked yeah. him up with with Iron Maiden to play golf. And uh, Davey Murray said to me that that it was Davey, Nick, and Nico and Coop, and they went off out in Arizona and played golf. And they get back to the gig. It's a Maiden gig, and and Davey said. Uh, Dave is such a sweetheart. He's a lovely guy. And he said, oh, he's a good golfer. He hit my ball. He said, it went in the rough. And he said, I'm in Arizona. He said, I'll just go in the rough with my golf club. And Alice grabs me from behind the shoulder. And he went, hold on, Davey. Rattlesnakes. And Davey's like, well, he, went, he said, Alice put his golf club in this, in this hedge and bought out a rattlesnake on it. And looked at, he looked at me and he went, wouldn't it be great? Alice saves Iron Maiden guitarists from snake bite. <laughs> just, his, <laughs> just his snake right on. But And even Davey Murray and Nico, two mega stars, were going, isn't he a great guy? What a great guy. He was just yes. great to hang out with and play golf with, you know? And it's, he is. He's just fantastic. Well, when, so is that organisation. Shep and all those guys. Toby. Fantastic. When STP was uh, recording shangri la Di da they did it up in, uh, by me up in Malibu at this big house. And I would go up there because the pantry was filled with great food. <laughs> so I'd go up there and I'd, I'd eat their food. And uh, Scott, uh, my next gig was going to be for, again, Charlie Hernandez. I was working for Guns N' Roses. And uh, Scott was a fan of Axel. He was asking me all these questions like, uh, you know, like some, I don't know, maybe even like a kid would. But he, he, was, he was very into the Axel Rose thing. He thought it was really neat. What's he like? What's he like? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's cool when you have this big, big megastar, and they're also like, wow. I met Jimmy. Well, I did Slash at, uh, Slash at uh, Cabo Wabo. Slash came down. We rehearsed him with Coop. And I did him. And you know what? He was just like, just the coolest dude. He was great. He's a man. good artist. Slash is he very tight. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Drawing, yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, artist. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, is he? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Very, Maybe. very, very, very good. Well, he's yeah. cool cool chap to work for. Perhaps. Well, he's from Stoke, which is up the road from Birmingham, so maybe that had something to do. I don't know. I just, I think he's cool, Gears, anyway. He seems that way. And you know what? The camera never hides it. I've always noticed. Kenny might be the same. You see someone on TV being interviewed, and you think to yourself, hmm, yeah, it might be difficult to work for, just mm, something in it. And then when you meet them, they're either just like they were difficult to work for, or, or they're not. You think, I'd love to work for that person. And you meet them in the flesh, and there's nothing about them. The camera don't hide it. So it's a strange camera won't hide all that not to yeah. me anyway you know yeah but on the other side everybody has their off days and stuff and that's of course they do yeah you yeah. know it's not right People it's not easy touring it's not easy it's not easy touring and, and especially kenny you know being on the on the tube with each other every night on this thing hurtling along the road or on a plane 
you all got to get on and you all know what the end, what you're trying to reach every day. And yep. people will have things going on at home that might get in the way and they try not to, but people get wound up. Yeah. You know, did, you, yeah. did you tour with Frank Scrambalone with uh, Soundgarden? No, I did, uh, I did 91, 92. I did Chris Cornell and Ben and Andy Bido was the drum tech. I uh, can't think who was the sound engineer, but I, I, I seen Frank on your on your last podcast. Oh, did and you thought, watch it? Where yeah, yeah, I went, yeah. It was dudes. great. Yeah, oh, it was great. Those two guys are great. And I thought I didn't. I didn't. Ninety one, ninety two, and that was another one where I got. I was at home. I just finished Maiden, and I got a call at home from a guy called Kevin Wilkins, who was from Birmingham, who had a lighting company called Concert Lighting with uh, Big Mick from Metallica. And sure. Kevin had gone off to America to be like a promoter's rep. And he just phoned me out of the blue and said, what are you doing? I said, I've just finished Maiden. Uh, what are you doing next? I went, Coop, I was, you know, uh, what are you doing now? Nothing, I'm okay for a bit. He said, I've, and the way he put it, he said, I've got this great band here in, I'm in Seattle. He said, they're called Soundgarden. They're going to be absolutely enormous. But he said, the singer who plays guitar goes out on stage every night and, and the first couple of chords, his guitar cuts out and he takes it off and smashes it up. And I said, what's he playing? He said, Gibsons. I said, he smashes Gibsons up. Yeah. I said, well, Pete Townsend finds that hard to do, the top of his game. Um, it's a radio system. He went, yeah, it is. And he told me the make of the system. And I said, I know what the problem is. And he said, I'll fly you out. And we got a tour of America and Canada. And he went, yeah, I'll do it. Some with Guns and Roses and some on our own. Great. Um, and, and the problem was with the system he was using is, is the batch. Kenny will know this. I, I won't name the system. Kenny will know yeah. that. You, you, you slide the nine volt battery in and there's two metal contacts in the back of the pack. And that's all the contact with the battery. When they, when they wear, the battery jumps around and you get, it cuts out. So what you need is a proper nine volt battery clip like we used to have in our radios when we were kids. Yeah. And a, ba a bag of those from Radio Shack costs $7, you know. So I fly out to Seattle and Kev meets me at the airport and he said, uh, Chris is here in the hotel. I'll take you up to meet him. Now he said, look, don't be put off. But he said he looks a bit a bit down a bit down in the, the dumps because of this problem he's having. Are you sure you can fix this? I went, it'll cost ten, $7. That's it. Done. I'll do the whole band. And uh, with Chris, yeah, Kev knocks on Chris's door and the door opens and, and stood there is this great looking guy, long hair, go suit, cargo pants on. But I thought, great looking guy this is. And uh, Kev said, uh, hey, Chris, this is Batty. This is your new tech. He works for Iron Matt. And he went, I don't care who you work for. Can you fix my problem? My first words to Chris Cornell were, have you got $10? So he looked at Kevin and he's like, who's this guy? And Kevin went, give him $10, Chris. And he'd come in, go in his room. He rummages about and... There you go. I said, thanks. It's been a long flight. I need a beer. I'll see you tomorrow. And I walked out of the room. And Kevin follows me. He just shuts the door and he's just laughing all the way down the corridor. He went, <laughs> how to make friends and influence people. I said, his problem will be gone tomorrow. And the rest of the band, they won't have that problem anymore, Kev. There's a radio shack around the corner. I did that. They come in the rehearsal room and throw the guitars on. And I'll meet them. Same like bad company. Meet them great, you know. I'm thinking these are great guys, you know, just great guys to begin with, you know. And Chris is like, uh, hey, man, how you doing? I went, ah, oh, hold your hand out, Chris. And he holds his hand out. And I go, you know, put all this change in his hand and a receipt, you know, a bill from the, there you go. That's your change from your $10. Is my problem gone? Yeah, it has, yeah. You never have it again. We'll see. So he throws a guitar on and thrashes it around and it works fine. He looks over at Kevin, smiles, and, and Kev Wilkins says to me, we never knew he had teeth. I said, what do you mean, Kev? He said, he never fucking smiles. We've never seen his teeth. He's been all miserable because of this. I said, we're going to have a great tour. And I'll tell you what, they were an absolutely stunning band to work for and their music, absolutely. And his voice, off the scale. Forget about it. It's a, yeah. it's a real shame. I hope you found peace there, Chris, but it's a real shame, but... Such a voice on the man. Great Have guys. Did his well. daughter perform yet? I've seen her, yeah. I've seen some stuff on uh, YouTube, and I think it was with Chris as well. 
I'm mm -hmm. sure it was. Yeah, yeah and, and it was like, wow, you know, wow. Right. He was so, and you know what? He was only down in the mouth because because of this stupid problem that cost seven dollars to fix. Yeah. And, well, you know, it's the knowledge and the, the all of the time. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. you know. And he had good text before me. You know, he had good text. Just couldn't. Oh, it's something that I knew with that particular system. So, did you make okay, him an yeah. Iron Maiden fan? <laughs> yeah, they were. They were like, yeah, they they kind of ribbed me a bit, but they were. You know what? They were great guys. And at the end of that tour, they said, "Look, yeah, we're going to have a week off. You can fly back to Birmingham, or you know what? We've got you a condo here and and a, and a car." Just stay with us. And there was like Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains and all this stuff going on. And I'm thinking, well, by the time I get back and I got jet lag and I have to come back again, I might as well just stay, stay with you. That's great. They got me a great apartment and they said, you go and pick your town car up. Now, coming from England, I'm thinking the town car is like a little Ford Escort or something tiny, you know? And I go down to this showroom and all these big limousines are there. And I said, I've come to pick up a town car. And the guy says, take your pick, man. What color would you like? I said, I can't drive one of them. I'm from England. <laughs> <laughs> but our roads over here don't fit cars like that. In America, the roads fit the cars. Sure. So they you know, got me an apartment. Have you called car. Ken Barr out to, give you, to drive you around? <laughs> Ken, Kenny, we had a car in LA, and Kenny, you wouldn't let me drive it. I said, come on, let me drive it. That one time in rehearsals, and you went, you're not driving a car, Bat. It's on the wrong side of the road for a start. I, I remember that. Do you remember uh, I was driving down Sunset once, with Vinny Moore in the car. And Vinny's a great guy, great <laughs> yeah, guitar he's... player, yeah. monotone. He rehearses his guitar oh, 10 yeah. hours a day. 10 hours and he day. talks like that. Look at the so architecture. We're, we're, I'm driving, I'm drunk. And he sat <laughs> next to me. And I, and I hear, Kenny, are you okay to drive? <laughs> sure, I am. <laughs> Vinny, why? Yeah. You're on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> He thinks he's in England. <laughs> then you wouldn't let me drive. I kept every day, every day, Joel, let me drive, Ken, let me drive. No, you're not driving. The steering wheel's on the wrong side. You're not driving over here in LA. I'm not... <laughs> and it's the easiest place in the world to drive, America. It's great, man. In big you spaces. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and just, it's easy. And you can, on a red light, you can turn. Woof. You have to stop. That's it. You can't do any of that over here, man. you got to stop. <laughs> So years ago, I was casting this film, and this young lady came in named Calico Cooper to uh, do an Callie. audition. Oh, and Callie. she oh was, my God. She was fucking good. She was a damn yeah. good actress Great, and a man. very, very nice girl. I remember. I really liked her. She was cool. And I I never worked, as you guys know, I never worked for Alice Cooper or anything. But I told her, you know, your, your dad's a cool guy. I've always heard your dad's a good guy, you know. And she's like, yeah, yeah very, very cool girl. So yeah. I don't when she... She must have been a little kid when you guys first started doing the. Uh... She was one of the. She was one of the gutter yeah. cats. She used to come out on stage and fight with. She was one of the gang in the gutter cats scene. She yeah. was the head. Yeah. She. We were all gutter. If you work for Alice and you do back line, you're going to be in the show. That's the way. That's the deal. Which is yeah. like, yeah, okay, yeah. So you can throw these coats on. We got the cats written on the back and your gloves and your glasses and. And you know it's great going out on stage with a beer can, and you keep don't drink, and you drink most of it, and you you in his face, yeah, and you're throwing it at him, and you're putting cigarettes out on his coat, and there's Cali there beating him up, and you got a gig the next morning, you're still in the job, you know, beating the boss up. He always wins, but Cali was she was great, man, she, and she was she was oh, she was quite young, I suppose then, but on, on trash she was a little thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trash was like 1990. She was well young. But yeah. she was she was cool then, you know. And Dash, oh yeah, yeah, you know, they were great, man. And bring his mom out as well. She was the coolest, you know. <laughs> I, I had some, I had some yeah. questionable shirts and uh, <laughs> and uh, with with things written on them. And uh, Brian Brian Renfield, God bless him, who was Alice's PA. Brian was was great. Brian Nelson, and he'd come up to me and say, "Baddy, don't wear that shirt tonight. Alice's mom's here. You know, I have some shirt with." fuck off written on it or something and i'd wear it out on stage to point at coop you know blow me <laughs> don't wear that tonight alice's mom's here okay and i never did <laughs> but yeah they're a great family brilliant and i think callie took over from from mom didn't she she you know mom cheryl still does the yeah. show they kind of coordinate where they both do it wow oh cool it's great. I mean, everybody takes part. The putter, the stage manager, Dan Stevenson, the production yeah. manager, me, Kenny, J-Man, the drum tech. Hey, 
you're all gonna, you know, you take part in this show, and then what's, you know, what's wrong with going out and hanging the boss every night or cutting his head off? Or it's great, man. Where can you do that and have a get, have a job in the morning? Just, and if an instrument goes down, that musician yeah. has to go deal with it themselves. The show comes first. Yeah, and that was the thing I asked you probably did too. Ken, what happens if the guitarist breaks a string? They're like the show first. Show and first, the, they and, can go do it. And his bands, I mean, his bands were really actually. They they cool. They got it, didn't they, Ken? They were like, and then luckily enough, I think I had what, Pete Friesen break a string once. You know what he did? He went straight over to his spare and put it on and carried on. Wow. I remember one time Reb Beach and I were were going at it because we didn't like each other, so we were really. No, you weren't the only one. <laughs> and his um, uh, wood screws pulled out of his guitar and it went flying. All he had was the strap. <laughs> yeah. And he did one of these, looking at me like I'm going to go get it, and like. Pfft. Fuck no! Yeah, bad. So he's off and he's <laughs> trying to sort it out. Yeah, Kane Kane Roberts was the first one I did on the uh, Rage Your Fist and Yell, and he was like Kane's the big muscle man, and that that was the yeah. main guy to look after. And then the rest of the guys, he's swinging his guitar around one night, and his strap flew off, and he just had the one radio pack, and it's gone now. It's in the crowd. I'm like. I went in the dressing room a little bit annoyed, and I had a word with him in front of the everybody. <laughs> And add the guitar with me. And I said, if you do that again, this is going where you can't find it. And it's right there between your legs behind you. And I walked out the dressing room and I was like thinking, he could snap me in two, this guy. He could just come out and go. <coughs> and he stood there going, sorry, buddy. I said, well, what do I do tomorrow now? Uh, I'll use the lead. Well, you'll have to. And I didn't tell him I had another pack stashed away, but, you know. But, no, they were great. He was great. Kane was fine, but. Which band you tour for had the best wind-ups? Well, well, you know what? Coop's a bit of a wind-up. He can wind thing. And, and Tony Iommi. Yeah. Tony Iommi's the kind of guy who'd say, Joel, you want a cup of tea, mate? I'll make some tea. You'll go, yeah, I'll have a, can I have a coffee? Yeah, I'll have a coffee. And he'll make you some coffee. And he'll go, watch this, bat. He'll get the sugar bowl. And he'll pour all the sugar bowl into you. There you go. And he'll walk back in and go, hey, you are, Joel. There you go. Put it down. It's over here, mate. And two minutes later, he'll come over while everyone's chatting away and getting on with it, and you'll drink it and you'll <laughs> spit it everywhere. It's not like all salt. That was another one. Tony's a real player. Tony, I know me. Oh, yeah. But never play Alice at cards. Oh, Alice, Alice is the, the man with cards. Yeah. Never I remember on, on Maui when he cleaned out Ralph Ferrari, and Ralph oh, just kept going back for more. Yeah. They were playing okay. cards or golf. Yeah. Five card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The golf thing. I. Huh? Yeah, golf's like um, every day or something like that. Soon, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, I mean, I had a, uh, I don't know why this happened on one of the tours. There was uh, me and Alice. And you remember John Camp, Ken? The, yeah, the security. security guy from England. Yeah. John Camp was the security guy, lovely guy from London. He used to be Frank Bruno's sparring partner. So he was, yeah. He's a quite thick guy, you know, and he was great. <laughs> But for some reason, we had, to, we had to drive up to Canada in this limousine, and John Camp was driving, and there's me and me and Alice in the back. <laughs> it's like an hour and a half drive or something, and they're out with the goop <laughs> in nice. a limousine going to like, yeah, John, dear boy, pull over for some coffee and tea, would you? You know, all this is like hilarious. And I, I said to Coop, how do you, you, know, you see, always? I've always wondered how if you're that that addicted to alcohol like that, how do you get away from it? And he said, and I can't remember who he said, it was another megastar, introduced him to golf. And he yeah. said, the thing, the thing about golf is that, he said, you, you've got to be straight as a die to get that ball in that hole. You, you, it just takes so much concentration and you can't be on anything. And I said, golf stopped you. He went, well, yeah. He said, it takes eight, eight hours to go around a golf course. It kept me out of the bars and, you know, yeah. and I loved it. And, you know, He's a great golfer, and it was yeah, as simple well. as that. Simple as that, and you think, where? Well, just and you, we, we never saw him in a bar. I never saw him on tour in a bar when we'd all be out. No. You know? I mean, all the Alice's crew, we all you'd all hang together and have a great, great day off or whatever. Never saw him in a bar once, you know, any of those places. He'd be no. off playing golf. Yeah. And and his other thing was shopping. He's addicted yeah. to shopping. Because yeah. I remember one time. Toby came up to me and handed me a blue sweatshirt. And I said, what's this for? He goes, 
Alice couldn't find anything for himself, so he bought you a sweatshirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, then. Thanks, Coop. Well, fair enough. We, <laughs> remember when, the, remember when the, the, we couldn't, have, one night, uh, Joel, we couldn't hang him. We couldn't hang the boss. And he'd, he'd, he'd go up on this gallows. I mean, it, I could stand under it. It was six foot over, you know. And he'd be led up there in, you know, grappling away with the hangman, who at that time was John Camp. And he'd have this hood on and... He'd have the noose around his neck, and then the music would stop. The trap door would open, and that's Coop hung. Well, the music stopped, and Coop's still there with his hood on and his hands behind his back, and we're like, holy shit, and there's putter running around, and we're, we're all underneath this <laughs> gallows. The, the trap is just stuck, and now Coop weighs about, I don't know, two pounds ringing wet, is it? You know, we're pushing... And you hear, we hear Coop going, are you going to hang me, guys? We're trying, boss. We're trying. Uh, uh, jump. <laughs> and then he comes falling down. And all you get was the hood on. We can't do He goes, ah, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> get him out. And off he goes and gets changed and goes on for the next bit, schools out or something. But can't hang the boss. We couldn't hang him. The wire had snapped and the, the, pulled the lever and right. that was it. Yeah, couldn't hang you have it. any like yeah. good uh, last show stories where the bands were screwing with each other or anything? I, I oh, we would like screw with the bands. We would, wouldn't we? Can we'd screw? Oh. Yeah, but with Coop, it was all about the show. We don't care if yeah. it's the last one. The yeah, show see, is the I, show. Uh, working for Charlie Hernandez, we couldn't. There was none of that kind of crap either, and he never. <laughs> no, Coop was very, the show. I mean, I made and were like that. We did all sorts. We made and uh, like lots of dry ice would appear and people in canoes paddling across the stage and stuff like this. And, and the maiden had been, so they'd just trap you on stage and they'd take, take the piss out of you then and they wouldn't let you off, you know. Uh, but yeah. Coop was all, it was all the show, which is, was right, because it's a great show. Whatever show he does, it's a it's like going to the theatre. It's like a rock theatre right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. You know? and, and really, if something does go wrong during the show, you're probably not going to know. It'll just fit in. You know? yeah. It'll just be part of the show. You look at yeah. somebody running on going, that's a roadie. You might just w run on with a limp and a hunchback, put something right and get off again. <laughs> it's you know? all part of the gig. I was right. on Coop for weeks that first time, and he came up to me once. He went, hey, you've been to every show? I went, yeah, yeah. I said, you know that guy who comes on with, with, the, with the brown professor's coat that's ripped and covered in blood, and he's got that mask on, and he walks with a limp like this, the hunchback? And he went, yeah. I said, that's me. He'd never seen me because every time I'd, I'd had this mask on, he never didn't know who I was for a few weeks. Oh, that's me. Oh, right, okay. So then I'd start kicking him as well then on stage as I walked on. Give him a kick, you know. Be all right. It's okay. Kick the boss. <laughs> yeah. on, uh, on STP, not, not just the last show, we had uh, Cheap Trick opening. And right. I used to have my guitar platform upstage left, same level as the stage, so I could get to Dean quick. Well, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick, wandering around during their show i'm up there compulsively tuning guitars and he sees me and he's got a follow spot on him so he wanders over and there's the roadie tuning the guitar yeah and i'm like Fuck. so yeah. you know I and that, that carried one. on yeah. for a good week at least every night here here <laughs> comes rick it's your time to shine <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. hey yeah. did you ever you may, you can catch this on on the YouTube uh, monkeys with guns. No. All right, on the, on the STP tour in '97, I think it was, the crew had a band called Monkeys with Guns to okay. sound check to, to line check. Okay. And it was that's all it was. Well, <clears throat> one day somebody came up to me and said, "You guys are going on." And it was like a 17,000 seat arena. I mean, a uh, uh, amphitheater. I'm like, what are you talking about? Monkeys with guns are going on. And I went home to Dean and he goes, dude, you're doing it. Mm. So they used to have this curtain that would open up and those mirror balls, do, 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 do. And there we were. <laughs> and there we went. Mm. Um, so we, we did we it. With, uh... The crew band was Irish Cock, and they performed at Pine Knob. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, they did the first half of uh, uh, whatever the first song was, and uh, and the band come out. 
In the hey, what's going out. on out here? That's what they did with us. And then I was yeah. I was the roadie. I went out and I think oh. I went out in my underwear and I, uh, kept, <laughs> I kept pulling around with the microphone cord for no reason. Yeah. The Metallica yeah. had one well, called uh, well, scrap, scrap Metal. They were, uh, go on, Ken. Sorry, man. No, no, no. I was just going to say, Monkeys with Guns are on. You easily found just uh, STP Road <laughs> Crew or something. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, I will tell you, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was on, on the on the Metallica Master of Puppets. It was a great tour, and I was working for Craig with uh, Metal Church, and we're over here in Europe. They called a new big Mick from Birmingham. He's, he's still see, and uh, they they had a crew band that was uh, Aiden Mullen, Danny Murphy, Fleming Larson, and uh, Eddie Kircher. You know Eddie, oh, God. and the, and they were the, they were called Scrap Metal, and then they were great. They could like, and then the, a couple of times the, the local bands didn't turn up or they're absolute shite. <laughs> and Bobby Snyder would say, "Boys, you're up, <laughs> Scrap Metal," and they got Billy Lewis in from from Seattle to come and sing for them and and help me with the back line because they were all pals. Get Billy over, man, He's a great singer. Scrap Metal, they were absolutely phenomenal. Brilliant That's band. Awesome. I mean, Aiden Aiden Mullen was a great guitar player. He was he ended up with Eddie Money, and you know, now he's doing bass for bass tech for Def Leppard. But they they were an awesome band, you know. It's crew bands, you know. There's not many of them about, not many good ones, but you know. When I did you do Metallica? Did you do to Eight, Metallica for Charlie? Uh, no, eighty seven Master of Puppets. Oh, that was uh, Bobby Snyder. Was that was one of the first ones? Yeah, and I'd seen them years before, about 82 i'd seen them at concert lighting in birmingham just with this one little tiny flight case with metallica written on it and with big mick was doing sound for like reggae bands and all sorts then and i'm like what's this mick he said that's the next big thing metallica they're great man they're he absolutely... wasn't wrong <laughs> no he weren't wrong yeah he said they're into, wrong. Wrong. they're into diamond dead and all. i went oh they're into brummy bands that's a good start for him <laughs> yeah yeah you know, I, just... I had uh, Martin Popov on here. Do you know who that is? He's a Alberta Martin Popov, yeah. major <laughs> journalist. Uh, yeah, he's got a whole line of books out. He's a hundred books, so he. Uh, oh wow! Well, yes. Yeah, and he. Uh, and I'm like, I don't listen to that much metal. Is the truth. So I'm like, when am I going to talk to this guy? Like, you know, Metallica's Black Album was a big deal. You know, you're talking about guys who are in a hundred fucking books on mostly on yeah. metal. So I was a little. I don't know, intimidated, but I'm like, what again? But he was so cool. We had a great time. He just came out with three books on Rush. And actually, one of the things he did say is that Rush, um, their stage show was just as big as Kisses. He said it was huge. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, really? And I didn't know. I didn't know. You know. I didn't know. Yeah, he said really, really, really big shows. So, yeah, for me, like Kiss would have been. I mean, how many trucks did you guys have? I think we had twelve trucks on Revenge. Okay. But they'd be proper trucks then, wouldn't they? They'd be filled from front to back, roof, floor oh, to ceiling. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like 12 Andrews. trucks now. Yeah. So they're like 12 trucks now, they're all like half full. <laughs> they're like 30 trucks and they're all half loaded. I, I get it. Yeah. I, asked Big Mick, I asked Big Mick about that when he was here in last time, two years ago with Metallica. I said, what's this deal with like, you know, you got 40 trucks, but they're only half full. And he said, it's, he said the faster we get out of here, we can fit more gigs in. He said, if you accumulate it up, if we're out of here in two hours, we can get another gig fitted. He said, it's all about gig. I said, even not the extra trucks and the fuel. And he said, yeah, just more gigs. Don't pack your truck tight because it takes forever. So what, they're just flat, they're like out. flat loaded trucks and you just keep yeah. them coming? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Keep them coming. Okay. Get more gigs in. And when you think about it, it's like, yeah, okay, I can see it now. Yeah. Well, so, take it to a smaller level. You buy something on Amazon. Yeah, how often do you buy just a scrub brush and it comes yeah. in this big box and it's big just box. because yeah. it's yeah. quicker it's, just to chuck it quicker. in and go, go, go. Let it go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, you know, Maiden was always front to back, <laughs> floor to ceiling. Then you're yeah. used to that, Kiss you know. the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then you get to Barrowlands in Scotland, in Glasgow, and they open the oh, doors. Oh, dear. Up, uh, what, what's that, like five flights? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good Lord. Uh, and you the first time I, Sorry, go. First time I went there with... Uh, it was with... Um, uh, it might have been... It weren't Coop. It might have been Maiden, but we had... We had Walter, who was an American guy from Anthrax. He was a drum tech for Nico. 
And and I said when we get to when you get to Barrowlands, the one thing to to know is it's I think it's the best cr- local crew in the world. Oh, it absolutely you get there, is. You were then when Those you get guys, there, you'll you'll see why. You know they'll they're they'll out of the their shoes. minds. And out of, so I said when we get there, open the doors, and step away, because you'll get hurt. Because they know what they're doing there at this gig, and they even put a hoist yeah. in it. They don't use the hoist to this day. They're like, "It takes too back and long. We'll cut it up, you know." And it's gone. Then they'll get up there and play a game of football in the in the in the hall itself. Yeah. And beat the, shit, beat out the shit out of each other. Yeah, man. I mean, with soccer, we're talking soccer, and they'll just knock the snot out of each other, and they're still there for the loadout. All right, laddie. Hey, right, let's go. Hey, it's easier coming down. <laughs> Off they go. Yeah. But, I mean, the Bronco Bowl was bad enough, but Barrowlands is something else, you know. That's wow. <laughs> Still love that gig. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like the Ritz, really, with all them stairs. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. God, the pits. We used, we used to go. We're doing the pits. The, is that gone now, Kenny? That's gone, isn't it? The Ritz. I know the, the Bronco Ritz, Bowl. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know about the Bronco Bowl, but the Ritz yeah. is gone. Yeah. I heard uh, last week the Bronco Bowl was gone. It's just like, well, just probably just as well, really. That's where Dancer broke his foot. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Dancer, the old grouchy old fuck. (laughs) (laughs) But it might have been the Bronco with that ramp and the poor Coke on it, so your your shoes would stick to it. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. What do you guys think on uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Bullock's cool. What's your thoughts? Because the Bengals here, I think, just got in. Am I right, Ken? Did they? I think so. I don't know. I don't really keep up. I mean, it just... My take on it, it's a seems a bit political. Yeah. There's bands that shouldn't be in there. There's bands that should have. So yeah. I've never been. I actually, we were there once. We stole the electric chair, remember? <laughs> that we, yeah. Alice, needed, Alice needed it for the tour. Yeah. And we it talked him into letting us borrow it, and we yeah, stole we never, it. We never took it back. <laughs> Relocated it. <laughs> I don't think they ever got it back. No, we did a lot of relocating the furniture. I remember the Be- Beverly Garland Hotel. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was And I wanted awesome. to recreate the cover of Joe Walsh's album. But seriously, folks, I said, come on, let's float all the furniture in the pool. So I'm wrong. It wasn't, it's not the Bengals. It was the Go-Go's going in. <laughs> Sorry yeah, about the that. Go-Go's. Oh, the, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. A boo-boo there. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we the got Bengals were awesome to work with, though. The Go-Go's? Debbie's great, weren't you? The Bengals? Yeah. no. I never, I never went with the Go Go's. The, the Bangles, they were oh. awesome. Yeah, Mickey, I never, uh, Mickey met the Deb, bass players. Sorry, I never met Deb, and she was just absolutely a star. Deb, the drummer. Brilliant. Oh yeah, and yeah. Mickey was a metalhead, pure metalhead. I mean, she was awesome to work with. Wow, you yeah. liked them, didn't you? You had a good time with the Bangles, didn't you? You really liked that band working for them. Yeah, well, yeah. I could. Truth be told, I kind of had a thing for Mickey, but you know, that didn't. <laughs> Scurvy, filthy roadie, you know, go back to Dirty your truck. Head. Go back to your truck. And... <laughs> but it was a good gig, good people, good, you know, everything. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Few and far between. Hey? A bit like crew, you know? Yeah. What are you guys doing these days? What are, are you writing another book, Ken? Or you, you wrote quite a few here. Um, I'm doing a, a few things. Um, I've been writing for a local newspaper, like the local county newspaper. Cool. And it, I've been writing, however it gravitated towards this, these little articles about Abby, my dog. And yeah. it's going to be like a Marley and me type thing. So when I'm done, which is a couple of weeks probably from now, they're going to get all put together and that'll be the next book to come out, uh, Living with Abby. <laughs> cool. Um, I want to get a movie started. There's um, a production company called Post Effects. I worked with them on some of the movies I did previously. And he wants to start a podcast. And it's like, I don't, that's that's new to me. And I don't, hmm. so I'm, I'm treading slowly there. Um, I'd love to do another full on book. You know, when I wrote We Are the Road Crew, yeah, it was the first thing I'd ever written, and I didn't ask anybody anything because I didn't know if I could finish it or not. Mm-hmm. So there's questions I would have liked to ask Batty, and a lot mm-hmm. of other. I'd I'd love to do a road crew second book, and talk to everybody, let everybody be involved, you know, 
hey, Batty, I, I was too drunk on the, this yeah. one. Uh, Why in Paris, you mean? <laughs> yes. See, that would yes. be the perfect. Yeah. But, uh, another part of it was, well, Paris what happened story. in Paris? I don't know. I got to add, did you not quite make it back to the hotel? Or? Oh, yeah, you did, yeah. Yeah. A couple of times. Made, a couple of times I made a lot of money that night. <laughs> Hey, we, 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 we were, uh, we, we, you want to tell it to you guys? Were you, no, you should... were you prostituting Ken in Paris? I don't know. God. Uh, oh, well, I, I, I tried. No one offered. Yeah, so, he tried, you know. but there were all lampposts that he was trying with, or lamp stands, whatever you call them over there, you know, with the street lights. They weren't having any of it. We're, all right, I'll tell it. Yeah, we got <laughs> we We were in, in this Page bar in Paris. <laughs> you tell it, going. <laughs> And it was on a traffic circle, and at the other side of the traffic circle was our hotel. So I decide it's time to go. I'm hammered out of my skull. <laughs> and I bounce off every lamppost as I'm trying. I got hit by cars. It oh, was geez. just, yeah. and I, you know, I'm, I'm not, not a small guy, so, you know, there was somebody hit me with their car, I'd be yelling, fuck you, Frenchie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of that. So I finally get to the hotel and realize I've forgotten my jacket back at the bar. Mm. So round two, bam, bam, fuck you, Frenchie, <laughs> bam. And Bat's got my coat and a pile of loot, which he'll tell you that part of the story. <laughs> and so with my jacket in hand off i go back to the hotel hit by cars hit by all sort of thing and made it to the gig on time the next day but <laughs> batty made some money that which actually paid my bar my bar tab that's right yeah you yeah, were dancing on the street there. There was a little oh, bit of motorhead dancing with wow. the uh <laughs> well now it, it, this traffic circle it, it 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 was huge it's got it this thing's it's called the Place de Concorde in, in Paris, and it's got trees in the middle of it. And built. this is huge. And on the other side of it is the hotels and there's bars, and it's a real cool place. It's streets with just so Kenny's like going off, and we're all in the bar going, He ain't gonna, he's gonna make it. He's not gonna, do, you know, the, the French don't, they just drive how they want to drive. If you step out in the streets, it's not like in America, you stop. They're just, fuck, they just fucking mow him down. We better keep an eye on him out here, and we're all taking bet. Who's gonna, who's gonna bet? Is Kenny gonna make it? Let's open the book. <laughs> Let's see if he makes it. And we're watching him, and he's banging off. A, no, that's okay. That's one of those lampposts. He'd be open. but he's having a conversation with it. I think he just, <laughs> I think he just threw a left hook at there. He'd be all right. That car's hit. Oh, that car looks quite bad. Kenny's still walking though. He's all right. He's wobbling down, and, and it, yeah, he's in. He's okay. He's in the hotel. Yeah, he's all right. He made it. And then the next five, ten minutes later, he walks back in. Where's my jacket? We're all like, holy shit. <laughs> hey, Kenny, we just made a load of money to pay for your bit. Look, we, well, we, we all took bets that you wouldn't make it back to the hotel. <laughs> you, you got any idea what you just did? Yeah, fuck, fuck, Frenchies. A couple of cars with big bends. <laughs> Why were you picking a fight on that lampstand thing over there? Yeah, fuck, French. <laughs> <laughs> Want another beer? Yeah, I don't have another beer. Yeah. We made quite a few, but we made a lot of money that night, Ken, on you. You made yeah. it there. They made it back. That was the amazing part. We all thought he's safe now. He's in. Let's carry on drinking. And then he walks 10 minutes later. Ah, where's my coat? Ah. One of the <laughs> when you went back to get your coat, you drank a bit more at the pub, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it'd be rude not to. You know, I know it's, it's France and that. You have to join in there, don't you? And all the French people. But the thing is, the French people in the bar were joining in as well, looking out the window, going, "Oh no, this he's going to get killed. He's crazy. They drive different here, you know. You can't." I'll put ten on it. I have ten francs on. He doesn't make it. Oh, well, then come on, then. <laughs> the people behind the bar. I got it. This is just some normal bar. It was nice and quiet, and local people having a drink. And then Kenny appears, and the crew. We're all having a quiet drink, you know. And, you were, there, you were their local rock star. They probably have yeah, photos like of you up on the yeah. bar wall. <laughs> yeah, have probably. You checked out well, when Kenny goes to Japan, they have his name outside the shops in Kenny Kenny Prince Beer Bar. Kenny Prince Beer Bar. George there, there's a picture in the book. There's a picture in the book. Of the bar? Yeah. Uh, no, of um, 
the Kenny Bar beer sign. Kenny, he knows Bob, all the yeah. photos. Bad, bad will find it. He knows all the oh, photos wow. in the book. All the fun photos. I was in, I was in a bar once. I was in Northern California, and I, I was looking behind the bar, and I'm you like, "You're not old enough to get in a bar. What are you on about? Come on." I, yeah, well, yeah. Forty four today. Forty four today. <laughs> oh, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Cheers! Yeah, happy birthday! You. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I um, I was I was at this bar, and I'm looking behind the bar, and I'm like, "Is that a photo of me?" And uh, I was with a couple of friends, and they look, and they're like. That's yes, totally, that's you. So I'm looking around like, I don't remember being in this bar. And it was just like the whole walls filled with photos of just random people. And it was, it was a photo of me on the bar up in, uh, yeah. up in like San Francisco area. <laughs> and I was, that's I was, always scary. Yeah, it yeah, was a little weird. Cause I'm like, I really don't remember being here. What we got? Uh, I've got the color photo of this and I'm sure you have as well, Kenny. That's it. That's it? In, that was Cooper George. Prince, Kenny Bar beer. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Tokyo. Alice yeah. Cooper toured with Prince. No, no they were those. They were oh, all it's the different in nights. Japan. It's all. It's all about. Yeah, it's, it's Kenny Bar, Prince Bear. That's what we call him, Prince Bear. Oh, I see. I was. All right. I was in He's Japan in the, in eighty nine, and there there's this guy named George Silk who's a. He's got a, a little storefront on this six lane major highway. Go, yeah. It goes through Tokyo, and his big thing is inviting you over to his little table and chairs, and you know, give you beer and you no charge, and it's in the hopes that you'll buy something. Well, we were in Japan for like three weeks. And I was gonna say like he found shows. the right he found the right guys. He found the right people. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I got one hanging the on right the wall. Thing. This is this man's time to shine. <laughs> Were you with Alice yeah. Cooper? He's like, Alice Cooper will buy everything in my store. <laughs> yeah, I have everything. You know. so, okay, sorry. Man. No, that's all right. So I, I made friends with him. We just hit it off. So I was at his place every day. One day I was fixing broken folding chairs and the crew were like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, is this, he became my Japanese dad. So a year later, Alice is in Japan. And I tell the, the the guys in the band, go see George. He's your guy. Yeah. You're going to ha have a great time. So, you know, I go, we go to do load in. And uh, the, the guys in the band stop. And I guess they mm -hmm. hit it off with George, too. So they come to the gig and they're like, oh, George is looking anxious to see you. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. So driving home from the gig, that was his billboard. And whoever was in town, he would put it up there. To advertise, so that's why you welcome Alice Cooper. So we're all, you know, driving back to the hotel, and you can see the billboard, <laughs> big as life. And Alice is in the car with Renfield and probably one or two other people, and they roll past it and they see <laughs> the sign and they go, "Holy shit!" And Alice looks at it. This is what I was told. He said, "Well, at least I got top billing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah and on top Alice Cooper welcomes Kenny Bar Prince Beer <laughs> so George anyway. was great George Silk was great I've still I've got a uh -oh. piece of his hanging on the wall there but he, he did this barbecue in the street and I've got some good shots Ken of, yeah. of like the trash band in this street and all like so did you guys bring like a proper camera on tour we me and Kenny had video cameras I mean I've, I've got boxes of videos here that I'm going to incorporate into the book and Kenny had a car. I've got boxes of them from all the bands I was with. So you got to. I, I would. I'll help you if you want. I mean, with the logistics. So, like, when you upload your book onto Amazon, I don't know if you did it, Ken. It's a bitch. It's a bitch to do the Kindle. Are you on Kindle, Ken? No. Uh, oh, actually, okay. I am on Kindle. You are um, all right. Because I, I can I show used... you how to do that. It's a. It's a, it's a little bit going on. It took a few days to understand that I can save you some time. Once you yeah. understand their system, it's pretty quick. I've, I've never had a problem with, with uploading stuff, but I'll so gladly you take your advice. You have to put it in their platform. Then once it's in their platform, then you can submit it. The problem with their platform is the editing while it's in their platform is a friggin' nightmare, mm -hmm. yeah. especially uh, with photos, especially. Yeah. And like the cover the and all this crap. It was, uh, you know, I'm not a techie. So for me, it was, it was a freaking pain in the ass. Well, I, got, 
all these all these films you know when you know i don't know you guys over here some uh, years ago i was using video cameras when they were big ken you know that you had one yourself oh yeah people would say like could you could we'll, we'll hire a camera could you come and shoot our, our wedding i'll be like yeah great i'll do a lovely job and then you do the everybody wants a copy of the wedding and you know and and then it sits under the tv and in, in a box for years and i got a box of videos down here and i, I was thinking last year it's a shame because there's so many people on those videos bands and crew and so much so at, at the very least convert them into digital format and that way yeah. they'll never be a compromise never be no that's right yeah oh luckily yeah. the tapes of the tapes of i've kept at a constant decent temperature and i've kept them you, out can, the you can buy on you can buy on the computer a transfer service thing it's inexpensive you transfer yeah. all the digital. You'll have a great time watching them as they come through. Oh, so there's much some on there great you stuff. Forgot, you know, yes, uh, it'd be good. I've, sometimes I've put on, I've, I've just held, I've watched it on this computer. I've held my camera, uh, telephone in front of the screen, and just recorded it, and then put it on Facebook and said to like Kenny or ever check this out. And people are like, "Holy shit!" We didn't know we I forgot all about that. And when I see it, I'm thinking, "Wow, it's just too good to be." left here in a box because there's so much yeah, yeah, yeah. transfer you have stuff. a good time that's my boo-boo i don't really have any photos from touring yeah. we, nobody really cared camera the uh mm. i'm trying to remember i think jason stockwell he's a bass tech do you know jason he's a backline guy yeah he did stp he did stp and so jason i think had a camera always if i re- i'm trying to remember we'd get oh yeah cameras oh, but yeah. you're kind of yeah kind of <laughs> i had uh, i've still got it and it still works fine you know and just last week i thought you know i'm going to start using this again a 35 mil Olympus Canon Sprint, and it was camera of the year in 1985 or six. And I took that everywhere. I took it on all the tours on the back of my belt. He was in the, the tip of the technology like, here. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was like, and that was the time of the, that, that time. That was like, that was the best camera you could get for doing this. And then yeah. uh, video cameras came out, and you know, so I got a lot of photos and negatives, but I got a lot of video as well. And, and some of it's quite, uh, it's quite funny and some of it some of the people are no longer with us you know uh it's, that's the nice stuff know, is the good you know, yeah, yeah yeah and it's a, it's a shame what's, uh, what's the oddest band that opened up for iron maiden uh oh the oddest band i think i don't think the crew band ever uh, we never opened up for them but there was one band that were absolutely terrible and i can't think of their name now but they had a violin player as well and they were all a bit uh, gothic i can't think of their name now but yeah they didn't they didn't they didn't last too long they were politely replaced you know and uh the, the crew the, we had a good band with they, they've got a song i made and called lost for words and it's instrumental and they never play it it's great it's a great track and that's the cruise the crew tune that's what that's what we do sound check to and they they came to uh, one of the first gigs in in canada on uh, in 99 they actually turned up, but they never, you know, they just had side scene. They turned up in this arena and they all, we're doing this, and they all sat in the front row trying to intimidate us, you know, that Iron Maiden. And we're just thrashing away, lost for words. And then when we finished, did it all, then they just all clapped. Then they got up and we said, go on, do lost for words. Couldn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't play it. We just took the guitars off them and did it again, come out of the way. They, they'd forgotten how to play it. It's great. Lost for words. Great track. The, the, you know, the one of the best bands they had. Kenny knows these, and Alice had the same band. Was uh, the Almighty? Yeah, they're a good band. Right, and and the, when they were on, they were on Trash, and I was doing Pete Friesen and T Bone. I was doing bass and guitar, and every night when we, me and Pete used to go and watch out front and watch the Almighty. They were they were just fucking phenomenal, and Pete said to me, "I'd love to play in this band, man." I'd love to play in this band. And two years later, they're back on tour with Coop. And who's the guitarist for the Almighty? Pete Friesen. <laughs> playing nice guitar for him. Yeah, they were great, man. All those guys were brilliant. Great band. You know? That's cool. And they That's did Maiden as well. Debbie so Gibson cool. would tour again? I don't know. She, she hasn't toured in many years, right? I don't believe I, she, I think she does spot dates here and there. I mean, I think there's there's still a market there. Oh, I would think but, she would have a market, and you know, people love reminiscing. They, if you you pair up with you know, Tiffany, would be the obvious. They would sell a lot of tickets, man. I know um, she had an issue with Lyme disease, and that canceled some dates a few years ago. 
So I don't know. It, it might be a health issue. It might be don't need to. Mm. I don't really know. Like I said, you know, I occasionally talk to the mom, but I don't get into it, you know. Tell her I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to do that. Yeah, tell her. <laughs> hi, mom. Hi, mom. Hi, yeah, mom. when are we going? When are we going back out, Kenny? We with John Cizuli and Tim Gallup and oh, and how, and... how awesome would it be to go out and do oh. another coop tour? I think wow, you probably wow. would. I mean. I oh, I'll do it tomorrow. In a heartbeat, right? He would. I'll, he's not I'll going do anywhere. it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I mean, what do you guys think always... of Hollywood vampires? The kick ass, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, great stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do Coop tomorrow. <laughs> no problem. Be great, man. <laughs> yeah. I saw him in Birmingham two years ago. You know, Ken. He came to do the NIA. So it's two years now, and I was on the local crew. And I'd was one of the head guys on the local crew and the health and safety and everything. So we're waiting for him to the lights to have like he's ending the show and we're there with our hard hats and high visits on. And Alice comes down a ramp with this guy, with his security guy, and I walked, I took my hat off off and I went, Hey Coop and he stopped and he looked and he, he, I took my hat off and he went, Batty. And the guy went, Is this guy okay, mate? He went, This is Batty, man. You haven't you don't know Batty? <laughs> So no, a good show, Coop. Listen, you look a bit worn out. I'll see you later, man. And off he went. See you later. And he's, and he's telling the guy as he's walking away, that's bad, man. That's the guy who used to work for me. He cut my head off. And just, <laughs> it, was, it was great. You know, it was like, Ooh, there it is. And um, Ryan Roxy as well was playing guitar as well, Ken. So, you know, he, he was like, what are you doing here, Baz? Well, I live here. <laughs> that's a good start, you know. It's great, <laughs> it's great to catch up when the fans come to town, you know. It's nice to meet people again. And Toby, I saw Toby as well, Ken. It was all great, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. That was that was. Did you guys awesome. hear him do uh, where he narrated Peter and the Wolf? Alice no, Williams. no, he narrates uh, Peter. I think I'm pretty sure I'm right. It's Peter and the Wolf. That was kind of strange, but he they do a good job actually. I liked it a yeah. lot. I seen the thing where he did. I just put it on Facebook. I found it on YouTube where he where he does um, uh, technical dream coats and he's. Who is it in that real bad? But he drops the mic at the end and the girl catches it and he just drops the way Coop does, you know, just so ugh, aloof and drops it. It's all stays, catch it. So, so good. It's on YouTube there with the technical dream coat and he's playing the uh, the devil, which is great, in a gold lame suit and his mic and just at the end just drops it. So cool, you know, really cool. That's the way That's you drop neat. the mic. Yeah. So are you guys going to get back the electric chair to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Or is, is that the next documentary for you, Ken? <laughs> finding the chair and bringing it. Yeah, where's the chair? Finding, yeah. finding the chair. That, you might get calls now. Person. They'll be like, we want our shit back. It could be here in Birmingham. They don't know. It could be, couldn't it? You it know, could it could be anywhere. Be, it could be anywhere. We're not saying. We're not saying. We know that they got the pool out, the, the, the furniture out the pool at the Beverly Garland because, you know, the guy was a bit oh. upset the next day when we were checking oh, out. Geez. He was pissed. And we were like, what a bunch of assholes. Chucking the furniture in the pool. <laughs> You're just trying to take a seat. Now it's a thing. Now when you redo your pool, I'm redoing my pool, and we're going to put in a shelf, and you put the chair on the shelf. Oh, no, this was a, this was just a, the, the Beverly Garland in LA there. Me and Kenny had been to the bar and had probably some blue whales or something. And I, I had all the furniture was still around the pool, all the plastic. And I said, wouldn't it be great to create the cover of, but seriously, folks, to Joe Walsh, where he's got all the furniture in the water. And, and me, and, yeah, come on then, let's do it. So we we float all the furniture in the pool. And off Did we you go, go in the pool with it to do the photo? Or no, 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 we didn't want to get wet. We were too well, that's, drunk. That's to a half-assed effort, Batty. Well, it was dark as well, wasn't it, Ken? It was, you know, it was... It was, it was 2 o'clock in the late. morning. Yeah, it was yeah, fucking I mean, dark. Yeah, you know, hey, it was dark. And, and then we get up in the next, the next day to check out. We're like... Been a bit worse for wear, but very quiet. And there's a guy at the reception going, "Yeah, some assholes put all the furniture in the goddamn pool last night. If I could get my hands on those dates, and I'm there, I'm thinking, people, some people, eh? And he said, "Hey, you're from England." I went, "Yeah, some people are just bastards, ain't they?" Float the nerve. What the, the, what the, the nerve of the, the nerve. The nerve. Of it all. I hope you catch them. Damn. And it's such a nice hotel. <laughs> You know who did it? It was come on, Ken. Let's it, was get that out of it. <laughs> it was that fourteen-year-old Brazilian roadie who got away from Lemmy. Yes, it could have been. Yeah, he's causing a lot of problems. This guy. And the, and the one, one, the one uh, on the one coupe tour when all these, all these rubber, 
Blue Whales appeared all over the stage. That was another one that oh, that, uh, Lord. that was down to me. Well, down to me and Ken really. They, we've been out uh, unusually for us. We've been out on a day off drinking, and we found this bar that did cocktails called Blue Whales. I don't know what was in who the who knows, but when you when you got one they, on on the side of your glass, they put like this twelve inch rubber blue whale. Blue whale. <laughs> what was the color of the drink? Said so the drink colors is blue. blue. I won't drink it, was, it. Yeah, it was blue, and it was like blue whale. Yeah, that's tasting. a pile of sugary shit. You're gonna be a mess yeah, the next day. We were, yeah. We had well, we had we had enough for twenty four blue whales, and what we're gonna do with these blue whales? And it was like, well, let's just put them all over the stage set and hang them off the cymbals and the keyboards and. You know, all over the place, and Coop turns up. And he goes, "Why are all these? Why are all these whales? What's with all? What's with all these whales? Where do these whales come from? Whales? Well, wow, there's whales everywhere. Look, big things. Look, whales." Daddy's don't like, know. "I don't like the Welsh one bit either. No, I don't like the well, no, Welsh. No Welsh. Oh, no. What the Welsh doing here? The Welsh, Welsh, Welsh cakes. Not Welsh. The you think of Dave, Kirkwood, Dave Kirkwood, Scottish? He's not Welsh. He's not a, <laughs> Dave whales and Kirkwood." Yeah, whales everywhere, man. Me and Kenny. But we were bad the next day, but you know, you know. And and Chicago was another one with the onion on uh, toast. Oh geez, do you have a menu? Yeah, do you have a menu? Got onion on toast. Yeah. I was hungry. That's all I had. That's all I could find in the kitchen. An Somewhere. onion with toast? Onion on toast and, and some Lipton's tea because I Patty broke it. into the kitchen. Yeah, well it was well, it was kind of unlocked, but you know, I got in there. Yeah. And you know. And I kicked in the door. You're a gourmet. Out. You're a gourmet chef, Patty. That's pretty. Well, that's pretty well it was tasty. It was. It was very, very early in the morning, and and we, I had some because I, I I hadn't had any decent beer for a long time, and I, I had some Guinness at this place in Chicago called the Pump House or the Pump Room. It's where Phil Collins got the no jacket required because you have if you don't have a jacket on, you have to wear these brown nylon shitty things that they give you. And I had a few Guinnesses and got back to the hotel, the days in on the lake. And I was hungry and everywhere was shut. So I thought, I'll have a look in the kitchen. Got to have some food in It's a hotel. It's going to be plenty of food. And I went in. I did, did, the door was open. So I went, in, I went in the kitchen, two in the morning, lights on. Beautiful, clean stainless steel tops. Absolutely good. All the fridges were locked. And up one end of this stainless steel top, there was a loaf of bread and an onion. And there were some knives and a toaster. Onion on toast. It's a no-brainer. So of I put the toast in and, you know, chop the onion up. And and then I'm in, like, my shorts and that's it. No shirt or anything, you know. And then the guy walks in. He goes, hey, buddy, can you smell burning, man? I don't know. Shit, no. me toast. Well, who's the naked guy making an onion toast right well, he went, now in my well, kitchen? He, he, he half went out the door again and he came back in. He went, hey. Are you supposed to be in here? I went, only if I'm making onion on toast. Otherwise, no. I've got some tea on the go. Well, would you like a cup of tea with me? And he and he, he came up to me, dead calm. And he was a cool guy. And he went, ah. So what do you do? What, how, what? I said, I've been out for, I had a couple of Guinnesses. And um, I was hungry. I said, all I can find is this toast and an onion and, and tea bags. And I, I fancy a cup of tea. And he kind of, looking back now, he's kind of going, no, put, put the knife down there. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Let me take you back to your room. Can I get me to, get your toast? And he let me make this onion on toast and a cup of tea. And then he, he turned around, he went, here, take the box of tea, take the box of tea bags. I went, no, when you need the cup. He went, if you're touring America, you you know, you take the box. And you know, I'm with Alice Cooper's with the crew and, you know, take the box. It's okay. It's fine. And he took me to my room. Good as gold. And opened it up and I went in. Is this your room? I went. Yeah, there's my case over there. And said, you okay now, sir? I went. He tucked you in, didn't he, Batty? I see no, where this did, story's man. going. <laughs> Thanks very much for the. He said, enjoy your onion on toast, man, and uh, enjoy your cup of tea. And, uh, and I, I was like, well, that was that was really nice. The next day, when I get check out the hotel, we check out. All right, we we get to the gig, and in walks the tour manager at the time, and he's got this piece of paper going. Look what I've got. It's a, it's a photocopy of the the night's event at the hotel, and I've still got it, Ken. And it's like the, I found this half naked guy in the kitchen making onion on toast and tea, and I took him to his room. He said he was with the Alice Cooper band. We'll have to keep our eye on these people. 
There could be trouble. <laughs> <laughs> then right underneath, it was somebody else had put in, and it is Ken Barr, and he kicked the adjoining door into the room, and he was asking reception, how much was it for a door? And, <laughs> and I think they gave, he gave Coop this thing, thinking Coop will sack us all, and Coop was like, well, you know. He's no all, he's all, who, who, who are these people? I don't, I don't no even got, know. Uh, well, no, he was like, the, the, no one got hurt. The damages got paid for. And the, pff, hey, yeah, I did yeah. that once as well, you know. Do we keep Batty around because I like Gibson guitars? <laughs> yeah, well, he fixes guitars, you know. Maybe he fixed the guitar. That was, uh, that, that was a great night. I mean, you know, and, and, and looking back, that security guard was really cool. Really cool. He could have been like, hey, yeah, come on. No, took me. But what he wrote in the book wasn't very cool. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> Not very cool. I'm trying to get you fired. Yeah, Kenny, I'm, at, I'm I'm checking out and Kenny's at reception going, how much for a door? I'm not. <laughs> he's asking the guy and she went, a door, sir? No, I, yeah, no, I, I, I called from my room oh. and maintenance showed up. The hotel oh. manager showed up. The police came. Oh, shit. And, and all I wanted to do was pay for a door. Like, Just the door. Can you tell me how much? I'll pay it. So how much was the door? Two hundred bucks. Oh, that's doable. Bad. It's not bad. No, it was door. money well spent. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, that was Ralph, wasn't he? Playing you up next door. Yeah, yeah, he, he had yeah. my boombox, and I wanted it back, and he wouldn't yeah. give it to me, so I yeah, kicked his door down. His... <laughs> well, and there he is. He's laid in bed, laid in bed, and there's like five people in his room, taking measurements and calling the police, <laughs> and, and there police he is. officers. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Hey, it's a bigger gig. Yeah, here you go, Ralph. Uh, Ralph Rose, uh, you know. Every, every, kind of every, every, get you fired now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we were kids. <laughs> you were kids kicking indoors. <laughs> yeah. What about the Kiss guys, it seems. Are the, do you have the same family atmosphere as you guys seem to get with uh, Cooper and whatnot? With Eric, definitely. Um, everybody was cool to me. I can't stress that enough, but Eric no. and I, Eric and I are close and the other guys were fine. Like Bruce and I used to, um, both of our wives would FedEx out Star Trek episodes. They record for us. Cool. So then we would always exchange them back and forth. Hmm. Gene and Paul were fine. Everybody was fine. Everybody was cool, but it wasn't like the coop. There's nobody like the coop. Yeah. Now it seems like uh, it took you guys under the wings, you know, and yeah, a bit of fun. That's what it should be, be isn't it? job. It doesn't have to be Brody stuff, just jobs. You know, you should enjoy what you do for a living. You yeah. Should, and and, you know, and yeah. Chef will turn up, Coop's manager will turn up, Chef Gordon, and it and he'll cook. You know, they'll walk into catering and go, I'm cooking today, and he'll cook. Gourmet he's, food. He's a fucking fantastic cook. And like, you know, the catering love him. They're like, Yeah, carry on, Chef. What do you need? <laughs> I've got it. You know, and he'll cook, and you, the crew go into catering, and there's Shep, Coop's yeah. manager, cooking. I hear he just became a dad again as well, Ken. Did you know that? Did he, Shep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I didn't yeah. know that. Apparently so. John Skunskunski told me. Oh, wow. Well, God yeah. bless him. Good for yeah. him. Yeah, good for him, yeah. The old dear. The dear old chap still got it in him. And you know what else, Joel, at the end of the one tour, because uh, we did uh, – I think because we did Canada in January, February, March on trash. Coop, uh, Coop took us to Maui for like ten days at the end of the tour. Oh, that's that was awesome. You want to go to Maui? Awesome. Yeah. That was it. Was something. He even had a shirt done for it, and every day there was something to do. So pff, great, man. So yeah. so cool. That's kind and, of a know, bonus. Met, yeah. Met Shep had open plane. houses. Shep yeah. had open house at his place. Yeah. Food, yeah. booze, everything. Just just yeah, turn up. Day. Every day, just turn up, and then you got a guest book at his house. Yet, it was really funny because I opened the guest book to sign it, and who's there? George Harrison. So I, I sign underneath George Harrison. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh well, there you go. It's meant You're to like, be. You're like, that's my buddy. I know what he that's drinks. Pal, I know what he's. In. And I'm there about, well, I don't know, there about half an hour. And I, I, Chef's place is gorgeous on the beach, and I go get a boogie board because we do a lot of that in Birmingham on the canals, boogie boarding. So I'm the old boogie board, and I was having a great time. And the last wave I caught, I landed on my collarbone, broke my collarbone, and it was always pretty, re you know, ready to throw up. 
Kenny says, I got I know I know a dog chef goes, take him to these doctors, get an X ray and then, you know, you get these pills and we go. And Ken goes, I know I've got a great cure for these broken collarbones. There's a bar down the street. He's never been to Maui before. There's a bar here, just great margaritas. And they did do great margaritas, but they were in jugs. Great That's okay. Jugs. And it was after about three or four of them. I didn't feel a thing. And every day it was like, let's go and have some painkillers down at the old uh, Margaritaville. That's right. Yeah, I threw yeah. my back out a couple of days ago. So that's my oh, life. Right that's now. It. Well, you know what, Ken? That's on video, that that three or four hours in that, that place with that first oh, time yeah. we went. And you want to see us? Well, we start off great. And then as it goes on, it gets really funny. All these bad things. he's getting at. He's going to release these videos. He's going to want yeah, ransom yeah. from everybody. Yeah. Oh, ransom for him. That's it, Joel. You got it, pal. I, know, I can see where this guy's going here. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Well, you know, maybe to one or two, but yeah. maybe, maybe. Yeah, no, not Ken Bar. I wouldn't do that. Well, guys, I, I appreciate the time today. It was fun. Oh, it's been great, man. It's yeah, bad. thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Hey, thanks for watching Party Like a Rockstar. If you're not already subscribed to the Facebook or YouTube channels, do it. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. The handle is Party of Stars. Thanks for watching. You'll see you next time.